You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. All right, welcome back to Hello Sport. Home on qualified opinion and unwavering bias. No joke as I started introing that. A mere three seconds ago, I forgot the name of the show. I literally, I was like, what the fuck's it called? Didn't have a big weekend, nothing crazy, just just forgot. Just slipped out. Just slipped the fuck <clears> out, dude, I'm sorry. Like a fluff on a bus. Dude, like a fluff on a bus. <laughs> yep. Well, or anyway. Well, you're not, gonna, you're not going out of your way to, to force one out on a bus, right? So if it's slip, it's going to... No, it's you don't force out. them out, but I'm like, I don't hold them in. <laughs> if I need to go... And this is well, very you can mask it with the set. You can mask it with this with the hum of the bus. The hum, that's the same as on a flight. Hum on a bus, hum on a flight. You just know, okay, there's enough people in there that if I break this one out, everyone's a culprit or everyone's a suspect. Everyone's except, and I don't know what smell is, right? So I'm like a bit more, I wouldn't even know if it's really bad. Like, I assume if you were to let a fluff on a bus out and it was awful. And you knew it was awful. You'd there'd be like some shame or some like stress of going, oh, "Fuck, this one's bad." I hope no one's looking at me. Whereas I just because you can't smell, you're almost like the perfect suspect. It's, but it's honestly just like the for well, the me, per- it's almost the perfect crime. Yeah, for me, it's the equivalent of like you know, and you've got to like depressurize your ears. It's just that, but for my ass. I understand, but it is uncouth. Oh, completely. That's you know. But I grew up not understanding the the, the ramifications of a fart, so I just am less. Yeah, you just have to trust what those. I say. believe that it's bad, but I don't know what it is. Does part of you think there's a chance that like we're all in on it, and farts don't smell at all, but we just we, we or have that even believe like, that they do, or even that smell doesn't exist, and everyone's just making me think that I'm the <laughs> only one that can't smell. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I remember we were playing golf, and I was like, "Fuck!" It was like a smell on the on the on the wind, as it were. They were baking something. I like to think they were baking muffins. Ten year old man were like, it was a great smell, and you're like, what the fuck? Oh, dude? Right. Can you smell that they're baking yeah. shit? Like, yeah, yeah. In the middle, yeah, like can. in the middle of the biggest golf course of all time. What was that course again? What's it called? East Lakes. East Lakes, humongous, like fucking humongous. And you guys are smelling muffins on the wind. I'm like, yeah, yeah, muffins bullshit. on the wind, dude. Muffins on the wind. There's sometimes aromas will hit the hit the nostrils that just get you salivating. What's the best smell? The best smell? Good Lord. Well, like, I mean, that's maybe I'm putting too much pressure on you. What is it? It would be one of the great smells. It would be cooking related, I would say. You know, like, if it's a summer's day, dude, and the sun's fucking beaten down, but you've also got a body of water close by, you've got an Mm -hmm. esky full of ice cold blokes, you've probably got some margaritas on the go. Maybe there's talk, there's whispers of rose, you know, rose coming out as well. Then there's some martinis fucking flopping about. The cricket's on. Chilled rosé. And someone's just fucking whacked onions on the barbie. That's pretty special. Okay, that's pretty good. It's pretty fucking good, yeah. Really good. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, it, the, the, uh, the, the scent of a barbecue in, in full flight is very special. Onions, great. Garlic's great mm. if it's cooking. Like fresh baked cookies as well. Cookies, Sometimes cakes. Sometimes when you walk past a Subway, you can just smell their cookies. Subway gets to... Well, that's... Yeah, that's the... Co- oh, is that the bread or is that the cookies? Oh, I think it can go either way. They both smell good. Yeah, it does. Like your breads, biscuits, cookie, like mm. cakes and mm. shit. Mm. That'll fucking get you yeah. working. While we are on cricket, shout out to our good friend, Adam Gilchrist. Thank you very much for coming on, mate. Um, friend. Dear friend. Dear friend. Um... That interview live on YouTube, Hello Sport Podcast channels, SEN app, at Al, at Al, at Al. Shout out to Gilly. Um, Shout out to Adam. Adam, a dear friend. Good to have another member of the baggy. Uh, the, just the good to Hello welcome Sport. another member to the baggy green, uh, to the 11. You're right, Eddie. You're right. Um, great day for him. I believe that makes two Australian test captains. Did he captain a test? He captained one. He captained a test. Two test captains, and so the greatest wicketkeeper of all time. Who who loses the spot as the wicketkeeper? Was there someone as the wicketkeeper that's lost their spot to Adam Gilchrist? Not off the top of the dome. There's no shame in losing your spot to Adam Gilchrist, though. No, there isn't. I mean, there was always going to be a reef shuffling of notes. Yeah. Tom and I, obviously, opening. Ricky, yep. first drop now. Yep. PVL, four. PVL, four, obviously. Gilly, wicketkeeper, probably bat him at seven. Yeah. And then, you know, there's there's room for others. 
I can't really recall off the top of the dome. Look, I'm sure right, Ironside's it, getting a run somewhere in there. I see him, but, you know, maybe he's bowling. I know he's a bigger guy. Who knows? <clears throat> Have we got many emails, Tobler, Tom? Yeah, we got like a flood of them last week. Four baggy green members. Yeah, there was yeah like, for the lunch. Uh, for the lunch, the baggy green five, lunch. It's going to be one of the great lunches of all time. No doubt in that. It will be. Uh, I think it will be the greatest lunch of all time. Yep. I, I was getting hit up by King Dribbler, who's in New York. He's like, can you have it between Christmas and New Year's so I can make it? I'm like, we'll see what we can do. I'm like, are you serious, dude? You want me to fucking, like, between Christmas and New Year's to we, try and hold I the love, Nothing's even open. We love Johnny. We love him. I love you, dude. We love but, Like, you need to understand. And But I don't need to explain this. You already know the lay of the land. All the excitement, all the fucking, all the bent-up Christmas energy, like, is applied before Christmas. Once yep. Christmas is over, that dissipates. It does. The balloon pops. We can we can we can have it late ish, like twenty twentieth. Twenty second, the longest day of the year. We could have it on the twenty second, the summer solstice. Big we, day. Big the biggest day. The biggest day. <laughs> You're gonna have to move your flights. Yeah, you are. Because we're not having it after Christmas. Because that's like that's f- full blown horizontal season. Yes, it is. So this is while the balloon's inflating and then it reaches sort of like an absolute fever pitch. Christmas hits, the balloon pops, and then it's just exhale. Exhale, open the fucking belt. Yeah, well, you take the pants off, you put the boardies on. You put the boardies on. You put put a nice nice rayon shirt on. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? And you're fucking one that looks so sick. Yeah. And you just, and you un-fucking wind. You can't pull yourself off the couch watching great test cricket and then... You know, well, go to a lunch. Well, the cricket's going to be on, Johnny. Johnny, it's just not going to work. No. So what we can do, and I think it's pretty fucking generous, is have it on the biggest day of the year. Mm. Summer solstice. The summer solstice, the 22nd. Can you confirm that, David? Yep, please. yep confirmed it is. Big confirmed. day baggy green th- lunch. Th- it's a Thursday. Th- perfect. The big day baggy green lunch is on the 22nd of December. It cannot be moved. It is what it is. Mm. You can move your flights. You can move your flights because I believe be you're coming in two days later anyway. I think you can make that work. Summer solstice can't be moved. It can't be moved. What? What? I'm not going to get on the blower to the sun, bro. Mm-mm. She ain't nah. accepting calls. Well, if you're making a call to the sun, it better be for really like extenuating circumstances. Is that the word? Mm-hmm. The only time I'll allow it. What? A, a call to the sun? A call to the sun is when you've had a fucking gut full of no daylight savings and you call out of desperation but you're not calling on the longest day of the year because the sun's going i'm drowning you motherfucker yeah yeah this is I'm, I'm working my dick off today i haven't worked hard i don't work harder than the 22nd in the southern hemisphere yep i don't do much work in the in the north no at that time not on that day <laughs> obviously I'm, all my attention is down south i'm working the south into a fucking stupor <laughs> so Get with the program. Hiles, yeah. I believe you're yeah, fucking Hiles sooking as, as well. well. Dickhead, you're lucky to have one. <laughs> <laughs> so well, don't push in it. In fairness, we do have a signed Shane Keith we book. Do. That's pretty good. Which is now. Which is actually, to be to be fair, like, you know, that's very that's very good. Well, it's gone up in value, unfortunately. Yes, you, unfortunately. <laughs> Sadly, it's gone in value. Not that we're looking to sell it, but it's good to know. We're not looking to sell it. But it's good to know you got it. It's nice to know it's gone up. But not nice because of the reasons. Well, it's it awful. Did. It's awful. But it is what it is. Yeah. It's now an asset. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah. We've now got it behind a locked glass cabinet. It is. Well, it's not locked and it hasn't been assembled. And there's no cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> we do we've have got, the cabinet. We've got every intention, though, of building that cabinet. The two cabinets. They'll be built eventually. Oh, they'll be built. In the fullness of time. Yep. Now, where were we? We've got another announcement to make. Oh, we do announcements. Announcements. Housekeeping announcements. So, again, a lot of you who listen to Hello Sport don't necessarily listen to the betting show that we do, number one betting show on earth. We have had a reshuffle of personnel. We have. We touched on it on Thursday. We did. Got a replacement. Got a, got a replacement. Now, to be honest, as far as people calling for, like, who should replace Rain Man, this was the overwhelming call from the punter and the dribbler out there. And... Someone we've always paid attention to and followed anyway because his content's fucking great. We are very pumped to announce that. I mean, his name's Nathan, but no one knows the fuck that is, right? (laughs) Random stats guy. Random stats guy. 
is joining the show. He'll be with us this Wednesday. If you check out his Instagram at random stats guy, he brings the get the goat the goat stats. Fucking oath he does. RSG he brings it. RSG. So obviously he's NRL focused, which is makes sense because that's what we are. But he likes ponies. He likes cricket. Well, we needed to we needed to vet those those two sports. Thomas, he's yep. a big cricket guy, which we love. Yep. He's a big pony guy, which we love. And his NRL stats precede him. He will be joining us this week. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're pumped to have him on board, I think, Thomas. Look, yep. it, it was an unfortunate set of circumstances we found ourselves in, but the show must go on. It does. We must push forward. Mm -hmm. We have done so. The punter and the dribbler, I think, should be pretty excited about this little addition. Oh, God. Gotcha. Given there was a chorus of fucking calls for it. That's right. That's right. So um, he comes on. He comes on. And we continue on to glory. Going to be tough for him to win the season, but he is actually coming in in a better position than than you and I. Well, he comes in. Well, he comes in even. Yes. So he's significantly ahead of you and I. Yes. I think he's just about locked up second. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I, I had a pretty good weekend this weekend. Maybe the yeah, tide's turning. I, I started. It was just that I wasn't doing enough research. You know what I mean? And now two, it's like, two, wow, this two, guy's fucking talented. Look, I understand, but 10 units isn't going to make up for the 50 you're down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know what? It's just Rome wasn't built in a day, mate. No, it wasn't. All I'm saying a is... A journey to 1,000 miles begins with one step. Yes. It does. Just, just saying. Just saying. Um, anyway, so that's that. Dior hoodies are on sale. HelloSport.shop. Dior hoodies on sale. HelloSport.shop. Hello I've got another shop. announcement, which I did announce on Friday. We're just drowning in announcements. I announced it on Friday on the live stream after a day of crushing fucking cocktails. Uh, so I don't entirely remember, but I am officially off the keto diet. <laughs> He's off, off the keto diet. I'm off the keto diet. I felt like I needed to properly announce it here first. An afternoon at Wong's <laughs> will do that to you. <laughs> now, there is a reason. I was, you know, again, keeping some of my cards close to my chest as I was proudly, boldly, and unfortunately, loudly declaring my allegiance <laughs> to the ketogenic diet. <laughs> too hard. <laughs> no, it wasn't too hard. It was actually very easy. The problem was... Too easy. After 24 hours of having it, my psoriasis went from almost gone to back with a vengeance. It was like the sequel, you know what I mean? Is Return that, of psoriasis. Is that a symptom? I don't or was know. Your so body, because I was thinking about it as well. The listener will know that you got the shingles once upon a time. And we, those close to you, put it down to a diet almost exclusively of bacon. Now, because you went on the keto diet, the bacon intake went up. You did was, that, was your body? Was that your body going into shock? Going, dear God, not Are we again? back here? No, because I didn't just I didn't just dine out on bacon. I was eating like good food. Steph was like making nice meals at home as well, so I wasn't just pounding like bacon for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> although I did sometimes. Um, it was like within twenty four hours. So. I got it right, so I saw my legs, and then I just started committing to cold showers because our friend told us about cold showers working, and it started to work, and then I started pounding fucking keto. The next day, my legs were just fucking... There was, someone said something about you get a rash with keto, so I was like, okay, this rash kind of feels like psoriasis, but whatever, I'll ignore it, but it was all back up my legs, and then it started to come up my, like on my body and shit, like the psoriasis, like just little flecks all over my body. Stuff so was like, this psoriasis? I was like, maybe... I was like, fuck it, keep persevering. And then by Friday, I was like, dude, this is fucked. Or Thursday, I was like, this is actually fucking no good. Then I was speaking to Josh and he was like, just go back to what you were doing last year, which was like, just don't eat as much fatty. Why did you want to give the keto a go when you'd already lost so much weight doing the Josh diet? Because I jumped on my mum's scales, which were wrong. The scales were fucked. They said I was 99 and it wigged me out. I was like, how the fuck did I get back here? And so I knew that if you just like hit keto real hard for like a, a period, you can you can drop like a, a bunch of weight. It was me being a... Oh, so it was like a speed... To, speed. To I just wanted to shred a little bit because my knee was hurting as I'm running. And I'm like, is that part of what's going on? Anyway, listen, am I a fad diet pussy? Yes. 
That I think is fair to acknowledge. But I am just now going back on like not eating much at all. Would you ever consider something tried and tested? Mm. Jenny Craig. <laughs> <laughs> is Jenny Craig still doing her thing? I would be shocked if she wasn't. Would you know Weight Watchers changed their name to just WW because they don't yeah. want to talk about weight because they feel like it's a mean... Like it's, but that's why you're dieting. Yeah, huh? To drop to weight. To lose weight. Yeah. How weak do you have to be to be offended by the fact that the, the weight loss thing you're doing Well, uh, that's just an example of the world going fucking completely mad. Yeah. Hey, come in. Um, sit down, look. So we're not gonna. This this diet has nothing to do with your weight, right? Just wanted to. No. You know, just wanted to make but sure you that you felt comfortable that this diet that we're gonna put you on has nothing to do with your weight. No, you just you are you are getting stuck getting in and out of the car though, right? Is that true? Oh, did you, you have to get craned out of your home to come here? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, sweet. No, we have actually just. That's put not weight you, related though, is it? No, okay. this is actually a thing that we usually use to weigh road trains <laughs> on the highway, <laughs> but we have just rolled you onto it. Now, nothing to do with your weight. We are just trying to get an idea of, I guess, how many breaths you have left. Um, when was the last time you walked? Two years ago. Two years ago, right. Nothing to do with and weight. And your husband pushes you around? Okay. Okay. Or pulls you around. Okay. <laughs> pulls you. Behind. You're in the trailer? Oh, is this... <laughs> Is that a seatbelt or are you just Is that a horse float out the front? <laughs> are you just being tied down by some of those Oki straps and fucking... <laughs> okay, not yeah. weight related. Not weight related. They okay. truckers knots? Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know. So, not weight related. Shout out to WW. Yeah. But is, is Jenny still... Yeah, Jenny's still going strong. Over 700 weight management centres across Australia, United States, Canada and New Zealand. Now, they must work to some degree, right? But, I mean, it is really like it's just like, okay, eat... Don't eat shitloads. Like, just eat what we're giving you. No, I and think exercise. I think I would. I'm look, not to put words in Jenny's mouth because Jenny's done the damn thing. Jenny's been there, done that. But I think you go in and they say you let's get you fucking at least walking for half an hour a day and mm. eat these meals. Yeah, because we know how many calories are in them. I'll tell you what else we haven't ruled out for. If me. you're burning two thousand a day and you're eating eighteen hundred. Calorie yeah, deficit. So I, was going, I tell you what, we haven't ruled out. What if I got lap band surgery? <laughs> because, but you love eating too much. I'd it would just take blow the, that it'll, thing it'll, out, it'd wouldn't take, I? <laughs> Those stitches would blow out within well, the I was going to say, it would take away one of the life's great joys, which is eating. Um, it is one of life's you're great also, joys. You're also a, a big chance of... Popping them stitches. <laughs> Breaking that band, dog. I have seen, like, the... the like people, James. Was, James Packer. I think he... Did he get it? He got it. And now I saw photos in the other day. I'm like, damn, James, you got huge again, bro. It's funny when you see people who do it, though, and it works. Beautiful photo there on the TV. Um, they can lose a fuckload of weight. Obviously, it's not really probably for someone who is. Is it basically like we're going to fucking cut off half your stomach? I think so. Yeah. Um, so I was just looking up. You have to basically eat uh, liquid and pureed foods for a few weeks after you get the surgery few weeks yoga would fall under that surely <laughs> <laughs> have to have to it'd have to yeah so they just put a ring around the top part of the stomach uh and the ring slows the entry of food into the main part of the stomach and so you'll feel full after only eating a small amount oh so because so they don't stitch it up no nah, they don't like block it because i was that. trying to think about how that would even work apparently you feel full as fuck after like you know mm. tiny tiny meals like a cheeseburger would fucking do you in. A singular. A singular, just one cheeseburger. One one cheese. Dude, I drive, I had a fucking real like... How many did you have? 19? Yeah, I had a real PTSD <laughs> drive. Like, I drive past that max all the time. In fact, that's where I get my... Well, you don't drive past it. You go drive into it. <laughs> yeah. Get my large ice on back. But the other day, I was driving past it. And I just hadn't... Even when I get these, I don't think about it every day. But then I drove past it for fucking... You don't think about it when you go in there sometimes? Not every time. I just had this moment where I had a real flashback to it driving past. And I was like, oh my God, that was so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't enjoy that at all. Oh, what a shock. Yeah, I know. But I thought, you know, I could have... It's really like I had You thought some, you might have? No. I didn't think it would fuck me up as much as it did. It's a, it, was a, it, was, that's it was a brutal challenge. Yeah, dude. it is. I'm not doing that anymore. That's the last time. It'll be funny to see once this marathon's done and dusted, let's say that your knee holds up and you, you get out there and you fucking, you get into it. If you find the cheeseburgers harder, 
what once I'm fit. No, but like once you finish the marathon, you'll ha- you'll be able to compare the two. You'll be like, well, fucking that marathon was pretty tough. Or oh, I thought you I mean? were saying like, am I going to be struggling to eat cheeseburgers? I'm like, no, I was in like, what would you? It'll be f- interesting oh, to see no, what you prefer. You know what, dude? I think the fact that I did 19 means that the marathon's harder. Because I I'm just fucking worried about marathon. I did run 10 k's in the weekend though. I'm building up my fucking distances again. We got to go out there and get fucking. Oh, have you got all those? You got that bag of gels and shit from Pace Athletic? Oh yeah. Yeah, I do. Because I got to start trying them. Because I went, I was running on Friday, twenty four k's, and at twenty one, which is when my brother was like, "You should start taking gels at a half marathon onwards." I hit one of the great walls all time, and I felt fucking dehydrated because I was because I had like one half glass of water before I started. It was on the piss the night before. Yeah, that was. That was I didn't have any breakfast at all, so I had no fucking fuel in me whatsoever, <laughs> and. I was running. I ran twenty four k's in moderate heat. And when I a, saw him when we were going to lunch, he came and picked me up, and I looked at him. I'm like, "You right?" He's like, "Yeah, a bit tired, man." I'm like, "You look like you fucking could pass out in the Uber." It was tough, dude. I like I like staggered into the fucking news agency, and I I just but I was sculling that power aid before I even paid for it. I was like, I need to get <laughs> some something to me, and then I had <laughs> pumped pumped a bag of those like the natural confectionery company <laughs> shout to them pumped a bag of snakes in about one second just banged them into me and then you had a pasta then you had lunch and then i had a pasta because i just needed fuel dude and then i just like slayed there for a little bit but then i felt myself tightening all the way up so i had to like <laughs> sort of like shuffle around the house dude and like i ended up just like leaning on my elbow because i wanted to just like stay on my legs Eating this pasta, <laughs> waiting for energy to return. Did you have a snooze or anything before you we went to lunch or not? Nah, I was all right. But once the energy returned, once the fuel gave me, to me, I was all right. You have a you got a different constitution in that sense because then we went to lunch, we ripped in at lunch, and then we went and did the live stream where we continued to rip in. And I was mm. like, I was more tired than you were, and I ran five fucking kilometers that yeah. day. Mm-hmm. No, I wake up fresh, wake up good. That was I felt like not a low point, but I felt like this part of this whole marathon thing where I'm like this injury we were both on sort of relatively even like distances yeah and then we did the same distance yeah and then the injury came along and i had to fucking peg it way back and then when we're like sharing our screenshots of like how far we've run to josh who we're training with and it's like he's sharing 25 k's and i'm just sharing five kilometers i'm like (laughs) this is painfully fucking depressing but I'm proud of you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. I'm proud of you. So I need to start doing that gel thing, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna start eating before I run in the yeah. mornings because you got to you like on the on race day, Tom. Mm. You got to get up at fucking Sparrow's Fart, have a meal, and I never, I wouldn't, I couldn't tell you the last time I ate at five thirty in the morning. I don't know if I'm, you know. Well, I don't, start- yeah, most people wouldn't eat at five thirty. Well, I guess if you don't, like, I don't know if you get up that early, do you eat straight away or you're like, I'll wait till. I don't know. People, some, who, people are breakfast people. I'm not a breakfast not a person. Breakfast. I am in terms of the cuisine on offer. But I'm a not bre- at a time of the day. I'm a breakfast person Saturday morning, Sunday, Sunday morning, but it's usually like 10 a.m. Yep. and I'm eating out, generally speaking. You know, mm. it's like a, a, one of life's little treats on the yep. weekend. Mm-hmm. During the week, I don't eat breakfast, usually because I don't really feel like I need to, but also. It is a conscious decision to be like, I know you had half a block of chocolate last night and maybe a yoga mix, so let's just can back let's can break either tomorrow morning. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So you still you still hitting the yogas hard? I have one a week. Yeah. That's not too bad. One yoga a week's not bad. I and you know, and there's always Maltesers mixed in there and there's some connoisseur tro- um yeah, see you're now becoming me, dude. But I don't do <laughs> You're becoming me. But I, I don't do anything. I don't do your numbers though, bro. No, my numbers are fucking Like I like I'll have like a, a handful of, of Maltesers. I just need a hit. See, I don't need to could, pound. So bro. you tell me if you have like a bag or if we are, as we said, trying to put them out and make them look classy, a bowl of Maltesers there. <laughs> <laughs> and you have like a handful from the bowl, you won't go and finish that bowl? I'll have a quarter. I'll like. A, Will they be able to stay there overnight? I You'll go to have, bed with Maltesers in the bowl. I wouldn't have more than a quarter. Well, I wouldn't have more than a quarter of the bag. Well, so you'd go to bed with a bowl of Maltesers unfinished on the table. If I if I'd hit my limits, yeah. psycho, I wouldn't. I'd sit there over it like I was fucking. <laughs> Good lord! Now the group is up on the Blackmore's running whatever. Like you can join. There are people that have joined. Shout yeah. out to you. Do we put a what's it called? 
Yeah, the link is in the show notes. Links in the, the show notes, and we'll put it in. We'll put it in the um, in the bio, so you can go and follow. it And we'll way. put it in the our bio, Insta yeah. bio, Insta bio. You can also donate if you would like. Don't have you to. Don't have to. But you can. But there's just just letting you know there's an option. Um, how was your weekend, Tom? Good. I went to lunch on Saturday uh, at a friend's house. Well, friend of the show, Will Hickey. Oh yeah. How um, was that? It was lovely. Mm. Went there with, so obviously Hickey and his lovely partner, Jordana, mm. me and Steph. Sebo was there with his partner, Millie, and Streety came. Yep. Streety of On The Potty last week. Thank you, Hamish, again for coming on. The feedback was great. Streety uh, was coming by himself because Carly and his baby Rosie were on a gal's weekend. So we were meant to be there for 2 p.m. 2 p.m. kickoff. Saturday, sun shining in manly, God's country, whatever. Everyone's there on time except for Amy Street. What time did you get there? Two. Two. Yeah. Got the ferry. He sent me a message earlier in the day going, hey, you getting there? Can I have a lift? I go, I'm catching the ferry. Come with us if you want. No response. Okay, I'm fine. We're all there. We're like, where the fuck's Streety? And then um, we get a message and I'm going to try and find it. I almost put it on the Instagram and I was like, you know, it's probably too hectic. Too much Streety. Um would have been the right time to do it, given that we're in yeah, the throes of Yeah, I know. There was just a lot. Wait, do it, do Thursday potty into the Friday live stream, you know. It's just street, drowning in street. Streety street. mania over here. Streety mania. So this is Streety. Uh, he, sends the, he sends us this message at 3.13. So it's an hour. We, we're all there already. An hour and 13 minutes left. I feel like you guys drummed up a bit of disaster juju for me. Other than Hamish just having disaster juju running through his veins generally. Just now I lost my phone on the train and have been bouncing between every station between Bondi Junction and King's Cross looking for my phone. (laughs) Reporting it and having arguments with unhelpful train staff. I bet they were very helpful. And just now after giving up and going back to my car, it was sitting clear as day on the passions of sheet. Oh my (laughs) God, dude. Oh my God. So he was just bouncing around on the train <laughs> looking. How the fuck? Street, that's not how it works. You can't catch up with it once it's gone, bro. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? They don't go back the same direction. The, he would have been on the eastern suburbs one. It goes all out to Walleye Creek out yeah. to fucking Cronulla, mate. Yep. yep. Bouncing around looking for it. What are you talking about? Yep. He's so special, dude. Yeah, dude. Once you hop off, that train's gone. Yep. You would need to get in a car and drive and race try ahead and of it. it. Yeah, highly unlikely. Well, trains often quicker, often, particularly Saturday traffic. Known yeah. to be a cunt. Yeah, big cunt. So anyway, so wait, do you know that? Did he get to like the destination where you guys were and then realize? And no, then no, 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 no. He back? was late, and he's like, "I'm." The yeah, reason- but at, but at what point did he realize that he didn't have his phone? Like, was he pretty much there already? Or uh, half no, actually, he I- would have been bounced around the train, getting the train to, to the, the, the. He would have been getting the train to Circular, circular Key, and okay. then realized he didn't have it, and he's fucking around, yeah. like just ridiculous. All he did was just leave it in the car at the train station. I'm assuming, or wherever the fuck he's left it, right? So yeah, he doesn't get there till like. 4.30. Did he then, did he get his phone out of the car and then walk back to the train station? Give the give a wave to the people that just... Oh, I don't know that he would have acknowledged... <laughs> he would have gone down... You know, there's two escalators and they yeah. take you to... Yeah, he would have taken the... And, and, and knowing what we know about the train would need to be... Like, you need to chase down the train. Where were you, Tom? Hamish talking about the unhelpful staff in the full light of the situation knowing that hamish does not entirely understand our trains work and that they don't just go yeah those staff probably weren't being unhelpful they were just trying to explain to him the phone's gone unless well, they you want to you've got a helicopter you can fly ahead of it i think they would have been saying listen if it turns up and someone hands it in we'll let you know and he would have been like well that's not good enough and they would have been like well but the train's gone yeah it's left doesn't doesn't it doesn't turn around and come back no there is no train that i'm aware of tom whereby you hop on and it will just go from bondo junction to Edgecliff, back to bondo junction then to Edgecliff, back to bondo junction Edgecliff. it just keeps going in one direction mm. strange that he didn't know that you know it is shocking but anyway that's sort of like oh and then i mean that's like that's my weekend basically in terms of like street high point just being there for street and then also was he, he clapped in 
to the lunch. Yeah, and you know what? He rocked up with three Cooper's Pale Ales. <laughs> three. Three. And he goes, oh, I couldn't carry a case from the fucking war. And I go, why would you need a case, though? He goes, he bought three Coopers from home. I'm like, you're a fucking, you're a special individual. So he was carrying the three, around, what, in a little bag? Yeah. Like, how is he getting around the, in the train station? I'm just imagining this guy frazzled. Yeah, with like a, with like a tattered, but it was like in a tattered six-pack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so there was three missing. There was three missing. Yeah. So it was a big big night for Streeting. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. get pretty... Well, we at, Steph and I had to go home early because we're parents. I don't know if anyone knows that, which is one of the great ball aches because we were ready to rip and tear both of us. And it was like, fuck. Got to go home and breastfeed. And I don't have to breastfeed, but I have to be there for support. I can't just send Steph so, off. Oh, really? No, that's not fair. But like, what about Granny? Did you ship a, a Granny into being No, yeah, yeah. Marina and Nana was looking after the babies, but at some point they got to get a bed and you got to go back and... Can't you express... Uh, yeah, Zozo not taking the bottle. She still loves that tit life. Oh, she's not. She's not about that bottle. She loves the tit life. I'll tell you this, and I'm going to out a good friend of the show, Sebo. Um, when we were at fucking, uh, when we were at the barbecue, Seb, at like regular intervals, is going on his phone. We're like, what are you doing? He has a camera set up in his house to check on his dog. <laughs> and, I mean, firstly, <laughs> firstly, it was heartbreaking because Wallace one of the great punters all time, was you go and cheat and all Wallace is doing is just sitting at the door, staring at the door, waiting for him oh. to come home. So it's like, you feel awful for this dog. Why the fuck would you watch that? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Why dude. would you put yourself through that? Sebo That's tried torture. To, Sebo starts going, dude, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just worried about him. Just checking. And he starts trying to make comparisons to me in the street about the fact that we have kids and we're worried. And I'm like, Seb, it's a dog, dude. I love Wallace and Wallace is cute and I get you love him. But once you have a child, you're not going to give a fuck about that dog nearly as much as you do right now. And that's okay. I get it. You don't have one. All we're saying is why would you watch a video of Wallace staring at the door? That, you're, ugh, it's, that's twisted to me. I, that would, Dude, I would, was, that we were, would fuck me up to ruin my day. <laughs> we were all like, oh, this is awful. Why would you put, you're just ruining your day. <laughs> it was so and funny, And he keeps dude. going back to it. And he kept fuck. getting like arcing, you know, like, like not arcing, arcing up, but like when we're like, he's, he'd snap at us and be like, well, you've got to go home and feed Zoe. We're like, not the same thing though, right? Like for sure, not the same thing. So Wallace didn't move the whole time. Uh, all Wallace did, he would sit there not moving and then maybe turn around and look around and then Sebo, I was like, I can't look at this anymore and then I see Sebo looking at his phone and I'm like, fucking hell, dude. We like tears doing? rolling down his and face and all shit. that happened was Wallace was just closer to the door staring at it. So he would just get closer. All he did was just stare at the door. I was like, this, I would hate to know that that's what my dog was doing. What, what's, what's the idea behind the camera? He's like, oh, if he's, I need to know if he's barking loudly or not because we're in an apartment and it's going to fuck off the neighbours. I'm like, well, what are you going to do? Well, do you know, is it one of those cameras that he can talk? Yeah, yes. you, yeah, it is. So he can yell at the dog. Yeah, the but he wouldn't do that because he was like, that will fuck him up. Yeah, it freaks out the dogs. Yeah. Like, they don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's actually like, that I don't torture. know why people... When you think about that, that's actually really weird because then they'll be like, well, where the fuck are you? Yeah. yeah. And then you just don't show up for yeah. another five yeah, hours. Yeah, exactly. You're just screwing with him. Sebo. Yeah, love it. That you're just putting yourself through hell there, bro. Yeah. We've fucking Tonk's so crate she's crate trained now, and you just cover it in blankets. So he thinks he's a little bedroom. You can put him wherever you want. We went out for lunch on Saturday. Uh down the Highlands. We went to Harry's in Barrel. Beautiful little place. No idea. You don't know what? Thought I, I, was, thought, I thought I was talking to a barrel. Boy. Well, I don't know if it's a barrel institution, Harry's, or if it's new or not. Don't know. I don't know. Really liked it. Harry's on Green Lane. That was Green it. Green Lane. I don't know Green Lane. Dude, who's fucking, who's fucking come in and taken Dave's body? I don't understand how he's getting so quick with the Dior. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's, he's turned up this yeah. week. Well, they I feel like the, they maybe fixed he the internet. smoke bongs when he's on the way in. I don't know. But like after the... It's the internet, he said. Well, okay, it well, is quicker. Well, I mean, so he's basically saying that it's not him doing anything well. <laughs> it's just the internet. Yeah, but it also wasn't me not doing things well before it was the well, internet. Well, yeah. what about on Friday when you fucked up the quote for poor old Eddie? Who um, was that? Tell me I had an argument. Did we land on whose fault that was yet? It was a miscommunication. So Eddie didn't communicate? I said the last thing he says is this, and you wrote it down as the first thing the other person says. That was my understanding of what the quote was. Perhaps the last thing time, he says is this. Before next stream, I'll watch Titanic so I know all the quotes. 
No, oh, there you go. Okay. Mate, it, it's more than once. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I'll You're be gonna put like notes. ten or fifteen years in, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Before you get that, before you that get sort of the Titanic knowledge. Uh which was nice. Caught up with Woods, friend of the show. Yep. His wife is little baby India. Lovely. Which was very nice. Some uh, some special times, Tom. Mm. He just tonks in the fucking crate, mate. Bit of peanut butter, fast asleep. Thanks for coming. Not torturing myself with some fucking weird camera of him <laughs> staring at the door. Sebo, you need to be better, mate. That's uh, that's not how you spend your Saturday. That was hilarious. Hilarious. Anyway, um, should we talk some sport? I think so. Before that, I think someone else in the team um, had a big weekend if they want to tell us about it. Oh, Tobler. That's right. Well uh, done, Tobler. No, not Tobler. Tobler I said no, but well done, Tobler. Oh, yes, well done. Yeah. For reminding us. Mm. Uh, Dior. Yeah. Did you, uh, is it true that you went on a little date? It's true. I mean, much to the shock, I'm sure, of many punters and dribblers, <laughs> I'm actually single. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I did. I went on a date on Sunday, a daytime sober date with no alcohol, which is always interesting. Mm. This one particularly interesting because of where uh, we went, which was a cat cafe in Surrey Hills. Okay. You know, like, you know, you get a little coffee and tea and then there are some cats hanging out in the room and you can go just cats just crawling around yeah so they're like nibbling at you and shit or like well so we went to the room where it was like the older cats so they were a bit more chilled out we weren't in the kitten room um but <laughs> what, like, pre what prevents do you close the door when you go into the cat room like what prevents crossover yeah yeah there's like doors with like little mesh things and then inside the rooms they've got like all these couches and little like there's one of those kind of hamster wheels but for a cat and they've got all these ledges that they're jumping around and climbing up on. How many cats are there? In that room, I think there was like 10 or 12. Does it fuck. smell like cats? In, no, like, is that's it what I wanted to ask. And as a man of cats, was it just reeking of cat piss? Steph says cat piss, one of the worst smells of all time. I don't think it was that bad. Because it, it didn't smell like piss. It just smelled like, like cat fur. That's, you know. Okay. And, you know, you definitely like smell it when you walk in there. But then, like, after a while, I feel like I just, you know, you get used to it. Okay. Now I've got yeah. another question before we continue on this. How did you, how did this date come about? <laughs> how did you meet? How did you organize it? Uh, well, it, we met through Bumble, uh, an app. Um, yep. And basically an the ad. way it, it, we ended up Not there was, what's that? Not an ad. Not an ad. Not an ad. But sometimes good. Um, she, so in, in my profile, one of the photos of me, uh, one of the like four photos where I'm holding an animal in my profile, is me holding a hedgehog in Tokyo at one of those hedgehog cafes. Jeez, um, fucking these animal cats. So dude. yeah, do the animals work well? Um, and so she replied something like, "Oh, that's so cool! Like, do they have those in Sydney or whatever?" And then she looked up and she's like, "Oh, there's a cat cafe. We should go here." And I'm like, "Yeah, sounds great. I love cats." Okay. Which, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Tom and I are still in your bio. Yes, you are. <laughs> are we? Yeah. Can I see your bio? Can you get it on screen? Yeah. yeah uh, I don't know if I can get it's it. It's us at the the, the turtle neck lunch. Yeah. Oh, okay. And That's honest, the main photo? Is it the main photo? Uh, it's No, it's like second or third. The first one is me with my dog. It is your third. Okay. Who's second? Second is me and two of my friends. I was at a party. Right. We um, maybe swapped them around. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, but I, honestly, I get like the most replies on that photo. I got a reply last night onto that photo. Which one? A, a lot of, uh, the one of you guys. Oh, the me. turtleneck. The turtleneck. Because a lot of girls are asking if they can wear the top that I wore. That's kind of the main thing that Well, you actually it. looked the fucking best out of the three of us, in fairness. I mean, mm -hmm. disappointing as it was, you did look fucking fly as You fuck. did come. You I did was peacock come dressed to impress. Yeah, you did. So how did it go? Where yeah, did we look, get to? It went well. It was Are nice. we going a second date? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I've decided. How did that, you end? How did we end it? Well, we went for Froyo after. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Did you hook up? <laughs> no, we didn't. Okay. What about when Not you say goodbye? 3 p.m. on a no, it was What just, was the goodbye like? It was like a bit of a hug and a bit of a peck kind of thing. On the what? Lips? Kiss on the lips? No. Okay. Peck on the cheek. It was yeah. So it just like a, I left her at a bus stop, so you know. It was romantic. Jesus Christ, you didn't even drive her home? No, she lived like I don't know. Doesn't know where she lives. She what did you talk she, about? No, he does. She didn't it's, really like I kind of implied that, but I think she was so we were in Surrey Hills and she lived somewhere near there. Okay, it was maybe just like, yeah, I don't need yeah. a lift. Maybe she didn't want a lift. Maybe, maybe she got like etch vibes from me and didn't want me to know where Can she Can I was. ask with these things, because I've never been on like a blind date, essentially. 
or like a date, a, like a dating app date or anything like that. How's the intro? Is it awkward to start? You're like, hey, I'm the guy <laughs> from the Bumble. It is a little bit. <laughs> Actually, does it make the, it more awkward no, if you no, say it like weird, that? No, the thing that got me, <laughs> when I walked up to her, the first thing, like, because, you know, she sees me walking down the street and there's like a bit of a look and it's like, yeah, yeah, that's you, whatever. And she's like, oh, third wave of Dave, which is my Instagram profile. Oh, right, so I was like, right, all right, right, right sure. Yeah, yeah. But then she had to, I wasn't sure what her name was. You forgot her name? No, 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 I knew her name. Her name is but it's Wait, spelled, don't add it. Beep it. I'm just This is a name, but it's spelled I So know. I wasn't sure like what I would call her when I rocked up. But it was pretty like- D Dribblers will find this chick on fucking Bumble, won't they? Can you search chicks on Bumble? No, nah, you can't search. Okay. Um, I just see like, I mean, knowing dribblers as we do now and their penchant for Dioring hardcore, just beep the fucking name. <laughs> Especially because it's got a unique spelling, which helps, you know, nail or zero it down. Can you see on Bumble, like, surely not, like, other people she's linked with? No, no, no. Not Because that'd Bumble, fucking no. wig you out, wouldn't it? You wouldn't no. want to see that. Have you talked since? Yeah, we were chatting after a bit. What were you saying? Uh, I was just like, oh, thanks. Like, oh, what are you up to tonight? Like, she was going for a swim or something after. I don't know. How did this, how did the conversation flow at, at the cat cafe? It was good. I mean, she's interesting because she, you know, just moved to Sydney from around, I won't say where. But she's, you know, had an interesting life. Lots to talk about. She's smart. We spoke about, you know, Australia, the culture, all that stuff. Yeah, right. Did you, get, in, did you get into your views? Yeah, did you a start? Little, a little bit, but that's kind <laughs> of why I was a bit pounding her with fucking political rhetoric. I kind of embarrassingly said like, oh yeah, like I like some of those Disney movies and stuff and then walked away after being like, oh, I hate myself for saying that. Wait, what do you but, mean? What do you mean? I'm well, confused. Well, I was just... She was very nice, lovely girl, but it caused me to be too nice and maybe shy away from my more extremist beliefs. Yeah, right. So as in you were sort of wanting to get in your Antifa shit and she was like just wanting to talk about the new Buzz Lightyear movie or something. Well, no, we were getting into those realms and and I, where in other circumstances, I would have gone on a long rant about, you know, the problems of capitalism and why Disney and Marvel. And were you wearing your hammer and sickle earring or did you? Um... <laughs> no, I took them out, but ah, I, had, okay. I had the nipple piercing. Ah, she okay. couldn't see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she couldn't see that yep. in the cat cafe. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, she might be listening. I don't know if she's listening, but she knows I work on this podcast. So. Well, I'm sure you started Shout the conversation out. as you <laughs> have your own podcast. Yeah. Mm. These, well, these two guys sort of do it with me. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Employees. Well, Good you on go. you, mate. Well, key was posted. Yeah, Shout out to the Cat know. Cafe. And if there's what would any you give it out of five, five cat meows. Cafe, like five meows. How many three meows? And a half? I think it's actually decent. It's a three good ice meows. How many meows are you giving it? How many meows? Yeah. Three and a half meows out of five. You have to meow though when you do it. Right, so meow, meow, meow. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's talk some sport. sport. <laughs> Fucking hell. We are brought to you by our friends at Pilot. It's no mistake. It's no surprise that you and I. Big fans of Pilot and what they do. The, on the online men's health portal where if you don't feel like going to a doctor for your ailment or maybe you're just fucking busy, dude, and you can't get into a goddamn doctor's surgery, pilot.com.au is where you go. Now, if you forward slash it with a hello sport and put in the promo code of dribblers, your first doctor's consult will be for free. Now, you might be an old school operator who's like, listen... My grandma told me that if I have chicken and leek soup, then, you know, my bones will come back. Put potatoes in your socks gets rid of a fucking temperature, apparently. Like, maybe you're an old school operator in that way, but I wouldn't be surprised if you're still not seeing results. Mm. I think it's time for change. Yep. I think it's time to open your eyes to the wonders of the modern world. Mm. I think you go to pilot.com.au forward slash hello sport. I think you use the promo code dribblers and I think you get that free doctor's consult, the initial one, and you go, holy fuck, dude, can I take these potatoes out of my socks now? Because yeah. i got a boner that won't quit. And I need to get home and get home fast. I do need to just make the clarification that I was not told that potatoes in the socks gives you boners. But I also haven't tried it. so maybe. But I also does. guarantee you someone has been told that yes. in the fullness of time. And that may work though. I don't know. Maybe that's what Pilot will prescribe. I don't know. You have to find out. If you need health uh, assistance, Pilot the place to do it. When we talk rugby league on the show, we do it for our good friends at KO. The home of rugby league. We love KO so, so much. 
and thank you to them for bringing all of the rugby league that we get to enjoy week in, week out. Thank you so much, Ko. Thank you, Ko. We love you, Ko. I actually do love Ko. No, so do I. It wasn't a. It sounded like I was being facetious. No, it wasn't. Brad Pitt looks hot on our screens. Uh, Tell you who's hotter than Brad Pitt. Ko. Ko. Exactly. If Ko were a human, would be hotter than Brad Pitt. Now, I love rugby league so goddamn much. Because you just never know when the next fucking weird random scandal is going to come, and that, but that, but you know this, they always come. They always come. You don't know when. You don't know where. You don't know what. You just know that one will be coming, mm-hmm. and then it does, and it's so out of the box, random and weird and bizarre. But also on brand. Completely on brand and <laughs> also not that weird if you then look at it through the prism of it was a press conference blow up from Sticky Stewart. A Rick Noble. Oh, he went. I think this was... This was a Rick Noble. This was Rick Noble. We've, we've, we've been waiting for a Rick Noble for a long time. We have theorised about it. The science was clear. The the data was telling a story that, that Ricky about to blow. Yep. And the pressure mounting, they go down to a Penrith side, down on men, down on halves. I tipped it $21, sorry. And uh, yeah, carry on. You did. Uh, At the time of year when you need Ws if you want to make the finals. Yeah. And it sent Rick Noble into meltdown. It's as simple as that. Ricky popped, Ricky exploded. Yeah, Ricky exploded. The, Ricky the reactors, outburst. you know, whatever, the rods went back into the reactors yeah. and it all fucking exploded. Well, have you seen Chernobyl? Shout out to it. Fucking terrific. One of the great shows I've ever seen. On... HBO? Amazon. Amazon? Oh. Fucking good. I don't good. know. <laughs> I, I might have made that binge. up. If it's HBO, it'll be it's on binge. It's on binge. Yeah. It's on binge. It's fucking good. Replace that reactor with Ricky. Yep. And Jamin Salmon. Now, Jamin Salmon is, I mean, a slept-on rugby league name. It's a slept-on rugby league name. That name is fucking delightful. It's, honestly, dude, Jamin may be a a victim of notoriety, right? Like, he's not that famous. He's not famous, not that, like, high-profile, not that good in comparison. He's a fringe first grader. Fringe first grader. That maybe the name Jamin Salmon doesn't get the bright lights that it's that it should have until now. Well, Jamin's done things in the past. He's flipped cars. He's he's been in and out of the limelight, so to speak. Has he? Well, we did. I, I didn't realize this until someone put it in the group. We did a Batuta Advocate scandal recap. Jamin Salmon involved flipped the car on the oh, way home. Oh, did he? Drunk, I think. That might be alleged. Okay. I think it was. So Jamin's got form. Jamin does have scallywag form, but in this situation, in fairness to Jamin... He was just kicking a set of nuts. He kicked a guy in the balls. I don't know. I saw the replay. It didn't look that hectic, I didn't think. I think that he kicked him in the nuts. That's what I think. Intentionally? Yes. You think it was an intentional kick to the to I the think pills? he had his foot up there, and then I think instead of pulling it out and playing the ball, he goes, fucking, I'm going to give you another Okay, one. well, look, let's go with that. But... I don't have a massive problem with it. You're in the heat of the moment. It's rugby league football. You're trying to kick out. You're trying to kick out. And and maybe you're like, look, I'm going to take advantage of where my foot is to apply some pressure. I No one, I never condone a kicking in the balls. You don't condone that. Either way, though, it happens. Sometimes grubby shit happens. Whatever. Like, you know, Sam Burgess actually ripped a guy's fucking ball sack out the back of his asshole once. It's rugby league. You get Sometimes these. there's going to be nut stuff. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes there's nut stuff. We don't like stuff. seeing it. We don't love it. But sometimes, rarely, there's going to be nut stuff. You can't, you can't, you can't watch rugby league and just try and put your head in the sand as to the fact that you know what, there's never going to be nut stuff. There's always going to be, well, not always, but there is sometimes going to be nut stuff. Just like sometimes there's bum hole stuff, like butt stuff. Nut there's stuff. butt stuff. There's nut stuff. There's ear stuff. There's nipple stuff. There's eye stuff. There's eye stuff. There's hair stuff. You know. Yeah. There's stuff. Yeah. There's dick stuff. Dick stuff. So and this week it was it was nut stuff. This, <laughs> but so it's, it's a week for nuts. Yeah, the nuts were overdue. The nuts are back in the limelight, rightly or wrongly. 
Is he that now, are? Tom Starling's probably not stoked about it. Well, no. He Look, unfortunately, he was the unwilling participant. He's in got the a bruised stuff. set of testes, but that's okay. It didn't look like it was a kick that was going to leave a bruise. Put it that way. I'm not saying it well, wouldn't hurt. Well, Tom. Even the faintest of grazes can hurt a nut. We know that. We know the sensitivity of a nut. All I'm saying is it wasn't like a thwack. Did he? Was he removed? Was it, it wasn't a sack whack. It wasn't a sack whack, dude. I'm saying I've been hitting the nuts harder than Tom Starling was. That doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Doesn't mean that it was right. Doesn't mean that Jamin of Jamin Salmon fame should have done it. No, he shouldn't have done it. I mean, without knowing the ins and outs of Tom's nuts, I don't know how they hang, where yeah. they hang. That's true. Are they overly sensitive? What sort of undies is he wearing? What sort of undies? What, is, he, is he protected? Is he out there freeballing? God knows. Because if he was freeballing, they're going to be hanging low, which means hanging. that the kick was going to be more forceful. If he's wearing some, like, sort of, you know, uh, your budgies or whatever, then they're already kind of cupped and hopefully they're just getting a little bit squished. Is he, is he in undies? There's a thinner material there. There's, there's, a great cuppage, but it's thinner material, more prone to the effect of a boot. Yes. The budgie smuggler, a bit thicker. What also, what did... A bit more what, cushion. What did Jamin make connection with? Was it? Did he make the connection with the shin, with the boot, with the laces? What sort of boots was he wearing? Also consider this, Tom. Did he... Did he Make contact with the gooch or the or the or the cheek area before the nut to sort of re- take a bit of power out. Did of that it. take some power out of the kick, or was it all nut? Did the yeah. nut take the did the nut take the, the brunt of the force? The brunt of the force. That's right. Mm. These are all unknowns. How do you measure force against it? Like kilo, kilograms per square inch or something? I believe. Can or we thrust? Thru- can we measure the force at which? Jamin Salmon wouldn't mind if we started calling him smoked. Um, yeah, yeah, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So how heavy his boot is and how fast he was moving it towards Okay, the so we could, someone could work someone, out. No, no, no. Someone should. Someone should work out the amount of force that smoked applied to Tommy Starling's. And I think so. for the just for the the benefit of the experiment, let's assume that it was a boot on nut first, and yes. not gooch or cheek. Well, it's too hard to to really know whether there was any connection with the inner thigh or the gooch I'd, pre nut in pre impact. I'd like to err on the side of caution and just assume nut first. Yep. Okay. Nut first. Now, Jamin Salmon has lashed out and booted Tom Starling in the balls, and then as as Tom Starling collapses in a heap, which is what happens when you cop one of the pills. He's then also kicked him in the face as he fell down. Yeah. So, you know. Tom Starling having a shit time of it. That, coupled with the fact that uh, the Raiders ninth. Yep. Yep. Raiders are ninth. Sticky probably smells a bit of an ambush in the waters. Two young halves, one of whom he... Fucking hates. Hates. <laughs> Looking for the right word that hates, uh, and probably thinks that you know they're they're a big sniff for two points. Now that doesn't happen. No. He's also seen his players getting booted in the nuts, then booted in the face by none other than his arch nemesis, his yeah. nemesis, yeah, as yeah, it were. Yeah, yeah. Rick Noble having exploded walks into the press conference and then proceeds to melt down. So I, I mean, he's asked about the incident. It's the last thing he's asked about about Jamin. Jamin's kick to Tommy Starling's sack, <laughs> and proceeds to basically say, "I've known the, I've had I've I've known this guy since he was a kid. He was a weak gutted dog as a kid, and now he's a weak gutted dog of a person, or a weak gutted dog person. I think he said, and then he just gets up and walks out. Weak gutted dog kid. Now you're a weak gutted dog person. I, when I read that, was like that. Is one of the gnarliest <laughs> fucking payouts I've ever heard. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you never see that many adjectives, dude. That was so weak, gutted, weak dog. dog? Yeah, you'll get weak dog. Yeah. I've never in my life heard. You might hear you're a gutted dog, maybe, or a gutter dog. Well, you're a gutter dog, but not a weak, gutted dog. So your guts are weak, yeah. and you're a dog. <laughs> you're a weak, gutted. Dog. Do you even call is weak or is, he, is weak gutted the payout or is it gutless? Because if you said you're a gutless kid, but and then now I'm, you're but a I'm also, in, but I, but I, I interpreted it as a weak dog that's been gutted. I well, but so the, you're a weak gutted dog. I I read it as weak gutted. Your guts are weak because it's like again, it doesn't seem correct either way. Because what the fuck's a dog without any guts? That's been, is it gutless? Is it a weird way of saying gutless? Well, it would, saying well, 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 if it's been gutted, it would be gutless. Correct. It would be 
gutless, sure. as in it has no guts. No, I know, but it's almost like a very roundabout way of saying gutless. Well, that's the beauty of it, mm. is that it is a long roundabout way of saying gutless, which is which you, it stops you in your tracks. You go, hang on, weak gutted dog. But then I would also argue that if you were just a weak gutted, like your guts were weak, dog. The dog thing we already understand. That's a that's a dog. But if you're if you're weak gutted, your guts are weak. It's kind of gutless e as well, where it's just like your guts are weak. You it don't is, have, you're no, not the right it stuff. is it is. But I think that if you're weak, your guts are weak. You still got guts, but they're weak guts. They're weak guts. But a gut if you're gutless, you got no guts then. Leave a comment because we I don't have a fucking clue now. I I'm, I'm wrapped in a pretzel. If I don't I'm, know. If I'm what do you at, think? If I'm looking at the hierarchy of guts, Tom. Mm. If you were to look at it on a on a, a, a scale, yep. I think it would be fair to assume that gutless, as in no guts at all, Correct. at the bottom, yes. weak guts would be above, above. that. And then strong guts, that's <laughs> basically a compliment. Yeah, and made of the right stuff, you know. Ticker. Ticker. Aussie ticker. Ed out. Timmy Cahill. Yeah, yeah. Timmy Cahill's Instagram. That's probably the best <laughs> one. <laughs> you know the scale. Yeah. I don't need to spill it out to you. So I would like to think, and given that what we know about Ricky's relationship with Smoked, that <laughs> <laughs> that I think he's saying he's without guts, that he's been gutted. He's been gutted. So he's a weak dog <laughs> who has also been gutted. <laughs> yes. Well, fuck, that's brutal. That is. Also, you were a kid. Also, you were a kid. <laughs> and now as a person, yeah. you are also a dog that is weak and, <laughs> and gutted. has been gutted. And was the dog weak even before it was gutted? I well, mean, I think it was a weak dog that he that that now been gutted. Been yeah. gutted. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, it's, so. Yeah, now it's really fucked. Um, now, I mean, Ricky did come out the next day and apologise, as I assume Rick Noble would. Like, even the people who ran Chernobyl were like, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Which, like, you know... Every single person listening to this podcast has like blown a top before, and then Completely. and then come down back to earth and gone. Well, that was wow. That was that was emotional. That was emotional. That was unnecessary. But and usually you've taken. That I have heard somewhere. rumors as to why Ricky hates him. I have heard rumors, too. and if they are true, I get why Ricky hates him. But I also ha- feel sorry for Jamin in that Ricky is still holding grudges of potentially the behaviors of Jamin as a ten year old. Or twelve year old. Did you get, did, have you heard numbers? Ages. Age. It was like ten or two. It was like prime. It's the the ABC article is quoting that Jamin personally knew Ricky's son when they were twelve. Twelve. Mm. Look, I'm not a father, so I can't comment. Maybe it was so. What the allegations? I'm assuming it's just bullying or some shit. Right? Well, was, let's assume it was bullying. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, they're the whispers that are coming across my desk. Let's say that bullying was so intense. I don't know if you'd get over it. Even if it I'm not saying you get over it at all. I'm saying I can see why Ricky would be would be like feel the way he feels, but I can also see that if you're a ten year old doing something like that, and now he's twenty two or whatever the fuck his age, it's like, well, you're not necessarily you not necessarily you're most likely not the same person who was doing that shit. So it's kind of unfair to smoked that he has you know yeah sure he's fucking kicked Tommy Styles in the sack, but like. But is that like PTSD for Rick? Oh, fuck yeah. No, like 100% that would because be Because maybe is. his son was getting sack work as well, you know? Okay, well, if it was specific, then, you know, if it was specific to that, then it's like, wow, he really hasn't changed. <laughs> right. If I Smoke think was though, pounding uh, sacks back in primary yeah. school, then this is... Yeah. Smoke's an old pan- sack pounder from way back. At the end of the day, from an optics perspective, optics not great when you are the coach of a rugby league side, an NRL side no less, uh, with a bit of form, already $135,000 in fines since 2002, enough to buy a shit home in a shit town. <laughs> so nothing to sneeze at. No. <laughs> Mate, yeah. that'd get you old Kent Road on Monopoly, probably a couple of them. You know what I mean? Couple old Kent, a couple of old Kenties in the back pocket. So the guy's got form. This trumps all 
this will go down as maybe his crowning glory. Yeah. His yeah, defining yeah, yeah. moment. Well, the, 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 the piece de resistance. Yeah. His the magnum sh- opus. Is that what it is? The chef's kiss of Ricky's Rick fucking... Nobles. Of Rick Nobles. Yeah. I mean, there's been a few, but this is fucking special. I think this is the, the, I think this is the magnum opus of It's Rick pure. Nobles. It's yeah. so pure. Yeah. A weak, gutted dog kid is just... Mate, and now a weak, gutted dog the, person. Pers- it's just... It's fucking... And Perfect. not only that, but he's criticising a guy called Jamin Salmon. Oh, no. Like every, every element. And there's nuts, nut work in there. And there's nuts involved. It's yeah. so pure. This is the sort of fucking scandal that gets me out of bed. Yeah. This is why the lights are on in this building. 100%. This is something Tom and I can dine out on, baby. This is like the epitome of dribble and yarn. This stuff gets me fucking hot under the collar. Makes yeah. me feel things. Mm. <laughs> the- <laughs> <laughs> the NRL is going to come down hard on Rick. We know that. <laughs> like a ton of bricks on Rick, mate. He's fucked. Uh, yeah. Surely a suspension. Yeah, they're saying more than um, more than just a fine. But I, I, I do hope a fine's involved because I'd love to see his sort of his average. I'd love to see his total. About fine points go up again, you know what I mean? I think so. I'd love I, to see Ricky crack 150. He might be able to start getting, you know, like I a think, multi-level. Oh, mate, he's already at 135. He, he, will, he will shit that in. Yeah, so it's surely like at least a 25. They could do a 50G fine. I'm not work. I'm not. I'm not ruling out a 50. 50 is a lot of dough, Ray. Maybe. What sort of house are you getting now? You know what I mean? 185 thousand dollar house. Jesus, you might have a bit of colour bond around it or something <laughs> nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something real nice. Yeah. You know? So that's exciting. Fences are expensive. They are, dude. Colorbond's fucking top tier. Well, no, it's good stuff. Not Best an in ad. class. Not an ad. Well, not an ad, but Colorbond, if you want to come on board, it'd be a pleasure to have you. Yeah. So a suspension and a fine, probably. What we're looking at here. Again, it's kind of, I do feel bad for Rick as well, because if it is the shit that, like, you know, you don't get over those things. You wouldn't get over those things. Steph literally just sent me a message, funnily enough. She was like, I'm at the park, and this kid just came up and kicked and punched Evie, and like around the same age. And then the dad of the kid wasn't doing anything. Steph's like, what the fuck? And the dad's doing nothing. And then the kid came and tried to do it again. She had to like fuck the kid off. And I'm like, it's completely like such a small uh, situation. But I was just sitting there going, I want to go and fucking kick that kid. <laughs> So I can imagine that for Rick, it's just like, you know, it'd burn you. It would obviously burn him, but you've got to remember that he's already highly emotional. Exactly. He's seen his boys go down. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He knows they're in fucking ninth. They're probably marooned there, in truth. They've got a pretty good run, but obviously didn't help. The loss, that is. And then you've got an old school bully. Allegedly allegedly, who may or may not have worked the sack of his son, allegedly, now working Tommy Starlings into the earth. Yeah. And it's just tipped him over the edge. There's a lot of legends. The reactor's melt down. The reactor's melt down, and then we are blessed the beneficiaries yeah. of watching a meltdown live. Yeah. All via replay. Now, can you get what uh, Jamin Salmon's smoked family said? What was the, what was the smoked... Statement. Um, so they said, we were disappointed by the comments of Canberra Raiders coach Ricky Stewart after what was a fantastic game of football for the Panthers and our son, Jamin. So this was his family that released the statement. Um, we were surprised by Ricky's claim that he knows Jamin personally as they have not had contact since Jay was 12 years old. We are calling on the NRL to take action as we believe Jamin has been wronged in this situation. Uh, we will follow the correct procedures and let the NRL complete a thorough investigation. Imagine being smoked reading that, being like, what the fuck? Yeah, after the game. Ricky said, what? He said, what, bruh? Jesus Christ. I, I think I screenshotted something out of P's and D's. I don't know if this is true, and I bet you it's not because it's in P's and D's. But... Uh, Jamin Salmon hits back at Ricky Stewart's comments saying, yeah, well, at the end of the day, he has to show up No, 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 it's fake. You've been hoodwinked. Okay. Yeah. Slack report? As I, I, I again, I... Uh, you assumed. I assumed as much. Nah, the but Slack I thought, report's got me before as well. But Should I thought I thought it was... I thought it was Is that what it's called, though? Sack. The Sack report? It's called Sack report. 
Yeah, they've got me a couple of times. Well done. The sack report. I yeah. was like, you know what? It's worth reading. Well, but also the sack report, bit of sack work going on there. With, <laughs> it's not beyond the realms of possibility that you get hoodwinked by a publication called the sack report. Oh, I just wanted that to be true so I badly. I know. I read it and thought it was for a second. Then I went, so I retweeted sack report once and then went, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Shout out to sack report for hoodwinking the punter and the dribbler. Yeah. I don't know what else there is to unpack other I than think to that's, say I think that, that's pretty much it. You know, I hope, I hope Tom Starling's sack's all right. Yeah. I'm excited to see the fine. I'm excited to see the suspension. Can we push for 185 in total career punishments? Mm. We'll wait and see. We will wait and see. And obviously, to smoke salmon himself, hope you're all right. Yeah, to smoked. Hope you're doing all right, I Hope bro. you're doing all right, bro. Keep smoking. Keep kicking sacks. Just keep belting cunts in the sack, bro. Um, but then rugby league more generally, Edward. Uh, obviously, Denny Kemp has officially cursed the Brisbane Broncos. And I'm not going to get into any further details, but I've heard some rumours that the curse... If these rumours are true, then he fucking fully is cursed and there's more drums to the Broncos. But 34 to 16 against What are you the hearing? Roosters. No, I can't say it. I can tell you after, but I can't say it now. But the Kemp curse, real. What is it? <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you in a second. Okay. Yeah. Kemp curse, real. Kemp curse, real. Kempy's a dog. Kempy... <laughs> Kempy doesn't fucking get around his club. No. Um, look, I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm just putting that out there. I'm just putting it out there. Make of it what you will. Is there a chance that the Gold Coast kid who played a handful of games for Brisbane and then went to the Warriors is actually, is actually a bit of a sleeper? And now that he's infiltrated the club and is a bit of a fucking club legend, that he's just like filling the place with bad juju, sees that you know the, yeah. there's there's change in the air and goes, fuck that, I'm going to bring him back to earth. Is yeah. that possible? It, they're, they're, you couldn't rule it out. Because he has no affinity to Brisbane whatsoever. Well, no, he's a Gold Coast boy. He's really a Titans fan. He's a Gold Coast kid who played, you know, a, hand, a, small, a small handful of games well, for Brisbane. Like 40-ish. How many games did he play for the Broncos? 20, I thought I'm going to say 24. I thought he played more for the Warriors. Same. He played for the Broncos uh, 32 games across both his stints and 11 games for the Warriors. Uh, I'm just going to... Pretend I heard 11 for the Broncos and 32 for the... That's what I choose to believe. That's what I choose to believe. And Dave, at some point, we will get you to change his Wikipedia <laughs> to reflect that. Um, yeah, that's a typo, for sure. That's definitely a typo. It's definitely a typo. Uh, anyway, Broncos are cursed. They go down to the Roosters. They got humped, in fact. Yeah. I'm really worried if I'm a Broncos fan. The Roosters, though... The Roosters are the Roosters they're starting to hum. Roosters looking horny. It's, it, it just is what it is. You can't help it. You can't help it. Victor Radley of splitting your head open and then just getting it strapped up and then splitting it open again. Victor's a tough gun. Yeah, yeah, he's tough. I don't know what else to say about Victor other than to say that he's an inflictor. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's tough. There was a game on Friday night that I can't really remember. Mm, Well, yeah, no, we'd had a big day. Um Big down the tools for us. Busy, 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 techie, 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 techie. Fimagi. Yeah. Um <coughs> good start. Yeah. Good sixty minutes. Good sixty Good sixty minutes. It was a really good sixty minutes. In truth, I in truth, I'm grateful that I don't remember a lot of it. Like Shout out to Maddie the Waterboy who helped us on the live stream as well. Obviously, and Dave coming along with Maddie going the big lift. Bruh, like before the 55th minute. And Kempy for allowing us to use the studio because the internet and he was fucked all weekend. Yeah, shout out to you. Like in the 50th minute, I'm like, damn. Manly's ripping. Dude, first half. First half, like initially they got out to that early lead uh, with, a, with two to Sevo, but then we just started pegging them back. Cooler. Saab, and I was like, okay, okay. And then we fucked it because we let him in with that late try to Tom Opacic. Uh, Which was disappointing. That was disappointing. And then from there it was, well, actually, yeah, you're right. We did score coming in out of the first, into the second half, and then it was just shitsville from there. Shitsville all the way through. Listen, 
I still dare to believe, I still dare to dream, but not a great loss. Not a great loss for Manly. Four games left in the season, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Tenth, four points back. Is that the math? Could we do it? Yes, we could. Where are we? Tenth. So we're only, yeah, okay, four, four points. points back from the Roosters. What's the Roosters run like? I know we do this every week, but what have the Roosters got? Um, the Roosters The Roosters have a tough run, I know that. Next week, they have got, where are we, Cowboys? All right, that's tough. That'll be a good fucking game. Mm. At home, though. Yeah, then, then the Tigers, Tigers, easy. Then Storm, Storm. Melbourne. Rabbitohs. We need them to lose Storm three Rab of their next four games. And well, then we need to beat, who have we got? So, in a perfect world, they lose to the Cowboys, they lose to the Storm, they lose to the Rabbitohs. Rabbitohs. So, that's the three losses that we need. We've got Titans, and okay. We need, we need three wins. Bang. Win against the Titans, win against the Sharks, and then the Raiders. No, no, no. We can dogs. lose against the Sharks and then beat the Raiders and the Dogs. And we get three wins, they get three losses, we're home. Okay, so we're oh sorry, so we're still a chance. We're still a chance here. I'm not giving up because if we beat the Raiders, then we sort of knock them out. Yeah. So three losses to the Roosters, three lo wins to us. We can't give up. We're not giving up. No, no we way. won't give up. We won't. We can't. We won't. Broncos. There's no way the Broncos can no, drop out. Is there? Not, no, no, no. But look at them down in seventh. The Kemp curse, dude. Holy shit. It's real, dude. It's a real thing. It's a real And you know what? Thing. Good on sharks and cows in top four. I like them. I like sharks. I like cows. Like, I just do. I like the sharks and I like the cows. I like... I like the rabbitos. The rabbits, yeah. And I did like the Broncos until Kempe started fucking ruining them. He started cursing them. I've dude. never felt... I've never felt a great deal for them. I like the honest. Reynolds. I like the Cape Wells. I like the Cobos. I like the Carrigans. I like the Haases, you know? Again, I don't mind the players, but... It was just, it's just the team. I can't. Yes. I can't stomach. No. Something about Denon that just. No, well, Denon's ruined it. Denon's ruined it. Have you seen the rumors now saying that cashed up French rugby clubs want to go after Haas as a big fucking number eight? And they're like, he could make a million dollars in a fucking weekend over there. <sighs> Dude, imagine if he started playing for the Wallabies at number eight and just killing people. Dude, like him at number eight would be fucking hectic. It's funny because I love rugby league, but I like obviously I love rugby league so much. There's so many great players in rugby league, Haas being one of the greatest players in rugby league currently. But like imagining him playing for the Wallabies at number eight also gets me very, we, very horny. That is that that conversation as in like, imagine if there was no rugby league and we only and how would we go? Has taken up so many hours on benders for me. Like just just fucking panning that narrative into the earth. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, what would happen if there was no rugby union and all our league, well, no rugby so league, rugby league and all our leagueies just fucking played union? We Can might I tell be you the, truth? the greatest rugby Can I tell you the team truth? of all time. And I know it to be true. We wouldn't have lost a World Cup. We probably lost one or two out of fucking 70 Bledisloes. Like, I don't even think we would have lost a Bledisloe. Maybe one. Fluke year. Yeah, you got to have a fluke year statistically. Or like a lot of injuries. Yeah. But even then, rugby league so deep with fucking throbbers. But they're That's also obviously feel, rugby union also want to... Well, they actually... Like, so the Australian rugby union actually want to go after Suwali, who's a fucking freak show. Of course they want to go after him. I think he... Like, if he's not playing... I would be shocked if he's not playing rugby union by 2027 for the Home World Cup because they need a pin-up boy. Mm. They need a... They need a, someone for the kids to get excited about but by 2027 how old would tedesco be he'd be in his 30s like i wonder whether he's still the fullback or whether it's like you know the roosters start i'm just i'm just saying if i'm if i'm rugby and i'm and i'm looking for a pin-up boy for the world cup it's joseph swally 100 mm. percent. yep they've been saying also for a bit i don't know how hard they're still going after but they're going after matt burden as well did you see him kick a 70 meter dropout in the game? No, I didn't. He kicked it literally 68, 70 metres on the fly. And it just got all the rugby union comment section going like, fuck, he could kick a 100 metre penalty goal in South Africa at altitude. Yeah, he probably could, dude. Yeah. He's a fucking freak show. I, um, it's not shocking. The dogs, though, were... 
Dude, Matt. Impressive against the, cow, uh, the Cowboys. Great first half. Yeah. Like, obviously, it got to 13 plus at the end, but, like, it only got to 13 plus with the last try of the game. I was watch. I watched it at. Um, I watched the first half at. Is it Briars? The Briars? Yes, it is. It's fucking great it's spot. It's a great spot. I Sat used to outside. spend a lot of my time as a kiddly winks on those playgrounds. Public and there's a dribbler. Gave me a free beer. Oh, Thanks that's nice. It. But big TV outside, and I was just sitting there watching Matt Burton get into his fucking work. That little grubber at the, at the start to add a car was so delectable. Then the little show and go yourself. Kid can play fucking Oh, yeah, kid can football, play. Dude. Kid can play. It's funny, dude. Like, when you think about how much chopping and changing there was in the halves with the dogs at the start of the year with Trent Bazza of sexy as fuck fame, like, just having some stability there, Burton and Flano just getting about their work. <laughs> It doesn't take Einstein to figure out that given Burton a new halves partner every week isn't going to be the best thing for that young kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give him some stability, Thomas. Mm. Foundations, mm. bruh, mm. For mm. Which he, from which he grows, develops, dominates as a regular yeah. league footballer. Mm -hmm. He could be anything, that kid. And then you think about <laughs> Scotty Drink on the other side. Scotty Drink, though, apparently the old the fish, the fish are going to make a big old fucking crack for. Scotty well, the Drink. fish need to make a big old crack at someone. Yeah, they've we've sort of forgotten about the fish because there's a lot been going on in rugby league uh, a couple of weeks ago. So Manly got the, found himself in some hot water. Now Rick Noble's melted down. People aren't talking about the fish and the fact that they haven't signed anyone. The fish couldn't even get Sam Burgess as an assistant fish. As an assistant coach. Why? Because he went to the Rabbitohs. Oh, fully. The fish yeah. can't seem to land anyone. Oh, I'm not that surprised by that. Like, the Sam Rabbitohs, Burgess. that's No, I know, but Wayne lies. Bennett, you know, da -da -da, Wayne Bennett was a but coach. But Wayne wasn't there the whole time. No, I know, but it's like, you're trying to become a fucking coach. Do you go to... Great point. Wayne Bennett? No, I know. Jason that's, a, that's a good... That's no a good disrespect point. to Jason, but Wayne Bennett's Wayne that's Bennett. That's a good point, Tom. It's a good point. They... This is their best 17. We'll go through it for 2023. One, Asako. Two, Jennings, Robert. Three, Branko Lee. Four, Ewan Aitken. Five, Edric Lee. Six, Milford. Seven, Sean O'Sullivan, who apparently can play. Well, yeah, he's, no, Sean O'Sullivan. He's playing for the Penguins on the weekend. Oh, yeah, he's seven, right? Uh, Jesse Bromwich. Jeremy Marshall King at nine. Mark Nichols at 10. Felice Kafusi 11. Kenneth Bromwich, 12. Tom Gilbert, 13. Cody Nirikurama, 14. Jared Wallace, 15. Connolly Lamalu. Lemuelu, I think. Lemuelu yeah. at 16. And the great and the powerful Ray Stone at 17. Not the worst side all time, but devoid of out and out throbbers. Yeah. Devoid of out and out throbbers is what I would say. Yes. Also. And then what's the rest of their top 30? Because let's talk about their depth generally. Okay, they have 21 players. So the, yeah, there's one one of these dudes I think was an All Black Sevens player. I remember there was a bit of mail about that. That might be the Tawer. Yeah. Um, Tawer Mason I, T. I, JJ I, Isaiah Isaiah Katoa though I think is a young up and coming horn dog. Mm. Is that Katoa's Penrith brother? As a seven, yeah, he might be. I mean, I don't know, but I think he's a, he's in the Penrith Junior System and he's a fucking gun, highly touted. So the 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 fish are taking a couple of Penrith's young guns. Yep. In Sean O'Sullivan and... Well, yeah, but like, you know, what the, I think for both those guys, right, it's like, well, there's no fucking chance of me playing first grade unless there's an injury. I'm just saying. No, no, I know. Yeah, he is, he's Sione Katoa's brother. There you go. There we go. See wow. This. He's, he was described as the best young prospect in the game by nine reporter Ben Dobbin. So he's got praise. It would have it would have carried a bit more if Joe had said something. <laughs> No offense to Ben Dobbin, but I know Dobbin, he's a good man. I thought though, when you were saying nine someone that it was gonna be a Joey or a Freddie or a <laughs> Gus or a fucking No was no, no disrespect to Dobbo. No, but but it would have meant more probably coming from Joey. Probably? You probably. Uh, yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um Is there so, anything else in the world of rugby league that we've missed here? I don't know if we want to talk. It was just about Brandy saying fucking Basically blaming all the bad tackles in the game on the storm. I'd back that. He's like, he was basically quoted as saying like the chicken wing and the fucking hip flexor and all that shit all come them. out of Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, they have. They're absolutely ropeable. 
the storm that is. But I was thinking about it and I'm like, probably was. They invented the wrestle and all that shit. That's yeah. all like, you know, yeah. using the body against itself, right? Yeah. So yeah. if it didn't come out of Melbourne, I don't know where the fuck it came out of. It did come out of Melbourne. They just don't like that. I think the fucking Matt Tripp, the owner of Melbourne, came out and was like fucking blowing up about it as he well. He was. But like, you know, whatever. Whatever, bro. Fuck the storm. Fuck the storm. Go Manly. Manly will win the comp. Yep. And rugby league, thanks to Kaya. Love you, Kaya. Bye, Kaya. Bye-bye. Punters and dribblers. Australia's out there fucking dominating the Commonwealth Games. I yep. think we should be shocked. 66 golds. 55 silvers, 53 bronze, 174 medals. Spanking the palms by 11 goals. Spanking. Nothing gets me going more than spanking a palm, Tom. No. There's very little. Also, just wanted to shout out to a friend of the show, Matt Denny, who got gold in, was it the discus, I believe? It was mm-hmm. the discus, Tom, yeah. Um, He's a real character of the Australian track and field team. Well, after our live stream on Friday night, and we were watching a bit of the Com Games, smashing back some fucking and loving it, some chow, watching the fucking diving and shit. Dude. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Um, but Matt Denny pulling a fucking one of the greatest lifts all time. You think the gold was good? He had to stand there for fifteen minutes and do a fucking. Witty banter chit chat with Mel McLaughlin, who I think is fantastic, and the other guy, who's a—I f- mean, it just—it was—it it, we we basically sent a message saying that was one of the the great nut trucks of all time, having to fill fifteen minutes with them. Yeah, and what did he say? What did he say? Denny's a dear friend, obviously. What a message! Love it. Glad you enjoyed. Appreciate it. <laughs> we said. Bro, yarning to Mel and the ball guy on Channel 7 for 15 minutes is one of the great nut trucks of all time. You did very well. Congrats on the gold. <laughs> oh, God. And it was a nut truck. It was a. It was tough television yeah. to watch. <laughs> not from his perspective. No, not from Mel's. Just at like, well, it's just like 11 o'clock at night. I mean, not for them, obviously, but it's just like having to be funny. It I don't was know. Like, it was... It was a bit like... Clunky. It was fucking clunky. And he nailed it. He nailed it. He did well. But Australia's been dominating. Hoare? Yeah, Ollie Hoare. Ollie Hoare in the 1500. Did you see this, dude? Dude, that run. Comes around the side of two world champions, no less, to get that fucking W, dude. And Bruce McAvaney commentating that old dick of his clean off. It was so good, Can we get the final 100 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we get Bruce I retweeted it. It's on our Twitter. I retweeted it. I said, all heart, all cadence. Get it up there. Let's listen to it. I tell you what, cadence got him over the line. Of course it fucking did, Eddie. Without without a good, honest cadence there, Tom, Ollie's in big trouble. Big trouble. Doesn't get the gong. No. Doesn't get the gold. No. And he collapses in tears as well after he wins. Dude, wasn't it special? The nation was... Fucking in tears himself. Fuck the nation was hot for that. I just love watching Australians dominate, yeah. especially we don't win many on the track. But at the Com Games, we do. Too far from home. Look at Ollie. This is perfectly run. Look at this. Dig deep, son, for the nation. Looks like he's got a hog on him as well. Oh, he's hogged up. For the nation, Ollie. Dig deep, son. Listen to Bruce. The last hundred meters is the stuff of legends. That gets me going. Yeah, dude. Bruce commentating his little heart out. That was fucking awesome. Good on you, Ollie Hoare. Well done. Now, do we know Ollie Hoare? Do I fucking feel like we have some connection to him? Or have I just made that up completely? I think we've got a connection with him. I think <laughs> I think we would. I said someone, but like a mutual friend or something. I don't know why I've just thought of that. I just think, rang a bell. I think there's a good chance <laughs> we we know him personally. <laughs> 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 Spag bowl second. Spag bowl second. In the I thought we were going to get a repeat. Yeah, 
I dared to dream of a repeat. Mm. Didn't quite get Didn't there. Didn't quite get there. But Spag Ball had a crack. He had a fucking red hot crack. It, he lost to the world champion. So I mean, he did. Like, what are you going to do? He did. Um, we won the netball. Uh, Didn't we after after losing? The Jamaicans mm. beat us, but then we came back and we fucking beat him in the finals. So stiff shit. Uh, what else have we won? The cricket. Recently? The, yeah, la- the cricket. gals won the. Dude, the what were the fun? Eight for thirty-four or something. Wait for. Huh? No, it was close. They needed though. no, but I'm saying they needed forty-four runs off thirty-four balls or something, and the girls took like eight wickets for fuck all. To now, win the game. You, just to show, and this isn't a uh, COVID rant, but just how crazy the world's got to, like how silly it is now. One of the girls in the Australian team had COVID and was allowed to play, but she wasn't allowed to touch. Can you check what her name is? T- yeah, uh, Talia McGrath. Talia McGrath. Wasn't allowed to touch any of the players, but she could still play with COVID. And then once they won it, she just went and jumped and they like forgot and they all celebrated together. And they were all like, oh, well, whatever. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, because it's... That's just because that's what it is. Yeah. But so why is it that the, the, was there, there wasn't any male cricket? No. Mm-mm. So it's just a just an only female event. In yeah, the I think game. someone said this to me, not official, but made sense because there's a men's T20 World Cup this year. They didn't have that at Com Games. Okay, sweet, sure. Um, I was just more like, how the fuck would that work? I didn't see any cricket being played in the men's side of things, but of course our gals. So we've got the Women's ODI World Cup, the T20 World Cup, and the Com Games. That's I'm holding up four fingers. I only named three things, but <laughs> that's because the thumb was there. Love it. Kookaburras are playing in the hockey tonight. I think. So that's exciting. Mm. There's more goal on the way, put it that way. There's How many more, more days goal. of the Com games? There's one the more. friendly games. I think yeah, I'm pretty sure tonight's the last night. Love the friendly games. I love the friendly games. I love that I love that we can just dominate the friendly games. Mm. That's what I like. Shout out to Cody Simpson who got fifth as well. I don't know if we talked about it. But Cody. we said he'd get a gold and with Simpson gold in Birmingham. And he got a gold and a silver. Yep. So we were right. Shockingly, shock horror. The diving was fun on Friday night. It was a lot of fun. The diving was fun. Sitting there trying to, like, score the diving when you have not dived in your life is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of fun. It was about splash, dude. It's all about and synchronicity. It's about synchronicity. It's about panache, and it's about no splash. Minimal splash, high on panache. You got to be high on panache. It's like toe point. You got to be. And High on panache, low on splash, synchronicity. That's exactly right. I would... I'll, I'll pontificate this, Tom. Mm. If you're looking for synchronization, which is a key metric, at least when we're judging, yeah. why would you have a fucking really tall guy and a really short guy they, diving was together? So, that, that was what Australia had, wasn't it? Didn't make any fucking sense. No, it didn't. Set us up for failure. No wonder we missed the bloody goal. Yeah. I think we got bronze. I think we might have got bronze. Not yeah, a bad we did dive. Get bronze. But you know what I mean? How are you going to be synchronized if one bloke's six foot four and the other bloke's well, five you're foot already, three? You're already out of sync before you've even Look jumped. at that. He's leaning that. over. You're out of sync before you've even stepped off of the diving board. Which is, and, and in synchronized diving, Tom, as the name would suggest, you're looking for synchronicity. Mm. And unfortunately for Australia, it was missing a little bit, which is why we won the bronze, not the gold. Yep. Now, I'm not calling for a review of the diving program. I think that's probably a step too far. Well, you can't call for an overhaul for bronze, but we do expect gold. But I wouldn't mind hearing from the director of the diving program just yep. getting their thoughts on why. A who's, head foot- of, who's head of diving Australia, Dave? Is it Matthew Mitchum? Uh, is it Matt? Is it Matt Mitchum? I don't think he'd make a decision like that. Well, I also don't think Matt. You know, Matt probably doesn't care about. Well, Matt was a singular ten meter operator. Yeah, he wasn't a big synchronized guy. No, so he's he's probably. But I mean, does he even crave being the head of diving Australia? Probably not. Is that the big event? Is that the big dick event of the diving individual ten? The individual ten, probably. It's the highest. Well, then you'd think it would be the big dick event. Uh, then- M- Matthew Helm is the head of diving who won silver 2004. Well, maybe the problem is that we don't have Mitchie in there because Matthew Helm won silver. I honestly, won gold. I honestly don't think that Mitchum makes that decision, putting a no. six-foot-five guy with a five-foot-three guy. No. I don't think he would have made that no, decision. No, he wouldn't have. He would have gone, they're already out of sync and they haven't jumped. That's stupid. How's now, unless we were putting the shorter guy in platforms. Okay, so you put it like stilts? 
Can you dive in stilts? What about two pogo sticks strapped to his feet? Give him some spring. What, spring already on spring? But then you're going to be out of sync with the guy next to you. You're going to be oversprung. Well, I think you'd have... That would be, that would then come down to the springs, though, right? Because so you could have tighter springs that are going to give you more of a bounce and some looser springs that will just help you come into sync with the giant that you've been paired with. Mm. Look, there's room for there's room for improvement. That's for damn sure. Mm. I also don't know whether whether pogo sticks are legal. I also want to know this. So they hop in the spa afterwards for a brief moment, presumably to to keep the muscles warm, is what we talked about. Then they take these little towels. They look like little fucking washers up to the top. I'm like, if you want to be dry, you need a proper towel. Yeah, what's with the towels? I don't understand. That's not drying shit. No. So what are you doing? What What is the point? Do you want to stay a little bit wet? Do you need to be a little bit wet? Do you need to go up there moisturized, hydrated? What What's the point of the mini towel? And it then does, they drop them over the edge. Well, it says here the towels, which are given the special name, the chamois, C-H-A-M-O-I-S. That's a special word. Just, that's what chamois are called, isn't it? Yeah. It says pronounced chamois. Oh. Um, but uh, the t- apparently the towels are extremely water, uh, sorry, absorbent, and it makes them dry off quicker and stay warm. So that w- stay warm, the little the little tiny shamwear. I don't think so. A proper towel wrapped around you keeps yeah, you warm. Yeah, that'd keep you warm. But I do know a friend of ours left like a camping towel at our house once, and it was tiny, felt folded up into like something that big, and it was like this little thing you take when you go in the outdoors. And I gave it a run once because I was like, "What's this fucking? What's this camping?" You're out towel? of towels, properly, and I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> And of course I, you did it. I, I you want a big say, fluffy towel? I want a big fluffy towel, preferably that's come just off of a heater and I can wrap it up nice and toasty. Mate, if they knew what they were doing, you would have sections at the bottom of the pool and there'd be the Australian towel rack and you'd be fucking cycling through beautiful, crisp, warm fresh, towels. warm towels. The tower, are, you know you get those heated towel racks, the poles, and they're like that's heated exa- up. Yeah. But also, guess where they've just come from? The dryer. Mm-hmm. So they're fluffy and they're ready to fucking rock. Are you telling me that the team with a with a towel rack heated with towels, fresh ones coming out of the dryer, aren't winning gold? Yeah, you've lost your fucking mind. Send them up there with a little sham wow in Birmingham. Yeah, what are you doing? You're not trying to polish the hood of a car. What are we cars now? Am I a boat? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm diving for the nation, and I'll be treated as such. <laughs> not a fucking tinny at the back. Do you know what I mean? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's a disgrace. And obviously there should be some sort of, uh, you know, internal... No, not an internal review because they're all just beating their own dicks in an internal review. Which all they've known. We need an external review. We need to get some sort of a body in to come in and externally review this system. They've been institutionalised. Yeah. That's all they've known. They've grown up with ShamWow. Oh, they'd use them at home. Well, that's, is the ShamWow a sponsor? You know what I mean? Is that sort of something where it's like ShamWow is in here going, no, this is the best towel to use for fucking diving when we all know that a nice big fluffy fucking towel out of the dry, dryer is the way to go. If they were the way to go, we'd all use them at home. And we don't. And it doesn't take a fucking genius to work out why not. Because they're shit outs. They don't provide any comfort. They're not nice to the touch. They're awful to the touch, those things. That was one of the great, the big things about the camping towel when I did use it at home. Awful to the touch. Effective? Not really. No, no more. I didn't even like to touch it, though. I didn't, it was effective. It was just like, give me a big towel. I don't want this. Give me a big fluffy towel. Give me a big fluffy towel. Anyway. That's the com games. All right, should we dribble? Let's dribble. Tom, Eddie, Dior, Tobler, punters and dribblers, it's a stats fan. I've got a question for you, fellas. I know you've played God summer game cricket, and I'm going to guess that at some point you've also gone 10-pin bowling. So my question is, which is longer, the cricket pitch, stump to stump, or a 10-pin bowling alley from the foul line to the first pin, or are they both the same? Dior, hit the pause button if the lads want to think about it. And then I'll give the answer. Mm, okay. I, because of the question now, think they're identical because otherwise why is he bringing it up? 
that's more that's where my mind thinks. But then if I was just going off the eye test, if I'm eye testing it, I think the ten pin bowling is longer. I think the cricket pitch is longer. Mm, I'm with you, Tom. Mm. It's quite a way, the ten pin bowling because I bowled no, recently. Yeah. You did bowl recently, and I played cricket sort of recently, not really, but I ran past cricket pitches yesterday. I wouldn't be shocked if they're the same though. No. They'd be, they'd be, they'd, it's not going to be fucking shitloads between them. No. Let's go, Dave. What's he, uh, what's he got for us? Okay. The answer is the cricket pitch, which is 22 yards or 66. Oh. Hang on. It didn't like it when I paused it. Why'd you pause it? Because he asked us to. Pitch. Oh, was it the same? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same dribble. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hang on. We'll get the end again. 22 yards or 66 feet. And the bowling alley is 60 feet. Be soon. Six feet shorter. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you bloody go, eh? So he fucking hoodwinked us with that. He uh, hoodwinked us with the question, yeah, but nice. then my vibe, obviously as a cricketer of note, was correct. This phone just has been falling into my fucking all show. Uh, good dribble, though. I like that from the stats, yeah, it's man. Fun. Out of fun. the box, weird, just fucking, you know. Weird you, and wonderful. You can repurpose that for yourself, dribblers. At it home. was weird and wonderful. Yep. But it was weird. Mm. But it was wonderful. Mm. Jesus Christ, you're right. Uh, that, was, that was in the tum as well. That wasn't, I didn't even burp news. that up. Apologies, everyone. Tummy's going wild. Uh, just quickly, the keto diet is fucking useless. It's made for people with epilepsy. Tom, it's going to do nothing for you. The reason people lose weight on it for every gram of carbs that you consume, that needs about three to four grams of water. So if you cut that out, that's where the weight comes from because you're just losing water weight. Um, and respectfully, I don't think you'd be able to keep up with it and your hunger hormones going to kick in and you'll eat more snacks. So please don't do it. Well, lucky for him, I've already quit. But <laughs> what he doesn't... I. Uh, I was comfortably doing it. I didn't find the actual act, like the keto diet hard at all. I didn't find, I found I was less hungry. Were you snacking? No, I, fa I found I was way less hungry. Well, I would only eat two meals. So you weren't snacking? Nah. Because to be honest, snacks is all like the shit that I couldn't eat. In my mind anyway. Like at home, it's like bread, crackers, fucking dips, mm. you know? But again, don't worry, bro, I quit. I'm now just back to barely eating anything. Much easier, but not, but easier. Less rash related. Good for you, man. Thank you so much. Puns and dribblers, if you're thinking of doing the keto, take this dribbler's advice on board. Lucky I'd quit before that, though, because it's hard to argue against someone that, I mean, he didn't give any qualifications. He may or may not know what he's talking about. There's there's every fucking chance he has no idea what he's talking about. Yep. But we're going to take that dribbler at face value. Yeah. I think it's important to do that. Mm. On we go. Uh, g'day, boys. Just the uh, life-saving dribbler here. Uh, real quick one. Um, just getting through the minutes of uh, the previous podcast titled Human Tales, and you asked us, Tal Falk, to reach out. So here I am. Um, uh, just a quick story. I was probably like 13, 14-ish, um, and like whenever I was sitting down, it was just excruciating pain, like right on my tailbone. So anyway, went to the doctors about it, had a look and turned out that like my tailbone <laughs> was like, had an, like a growth on it and like it was extra long. And anyway, I had surgery and got it like fucking cut off or whatever, like <laughs> or shaved down, if you will. And, um, then... Now it leaves me with like this mad scar on my like ass crack. So rather than like having like a cute bum where it like just finishes and then goes in like not mine like butt crack, butt crack, and it's like fucking stitched and then it goes into it back. Um, yeah, pretty rough. Um, anyway, 13 plus forever, loaning players out forever, forever, forever. Um, yeah, be it soon. Cheers. Wow. So we do have a tail dribbler amongst tail us. Tail folk, dude. Good to know there's a tail folk out there. And I am sorry you don't have a cute bum anymore, though. That's upsetting. That is upsetting you don't have a cute bum. You also don't have a tail anymore. Yeah. So. 
So maybe you do have a cute bum, though. You know, maybe it's just like beauty, cuteness is in the eye of the beholder. At least, well, I don't know what your sexual proclivities are. If we, for the purpose of this, assume that you are a heterosexual male who doesn't like getting pegged, then, you know, no one's really going to see it. That's a good point. He didn't, he, didn't give any indi- he didn't give any indication as to whether or not it wagged, which was disappointing. No, well, I thought it seemed like the tail was sort of internal, like he didn't realise he had it. So it didn't protrude so much as be like, oh, what's that? It's like, oh, there's a tail underneath the skin. Um, but again... I'm sure Doc would have given some indication when filing it down if it was wagging yeah, on the way out. Yeah, if it was out. wagging on the way out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he brought up the lollipop, you've been a good boy and the tail yeah, starts Yeah, exactly. Wagging. He's yeah. got to put a cone around his head so he can't lick his ass. <laughs> good, good stuff. That's good stuff. Shout out to tail people. Especially that guy. Especially him who called in. I will lift. I will go big. Hey. Got a story for you lads. Physio dribbler, dribbler here, by the way. Um, fuck me. All right. Level of ridiculousness on this. I'm sitting in the, in the parking lot, about to go pump some iron. Sitting in the parking lot in my car, um, looking over some papers in here that I need to look over. Some lady parks next to me, opens her fucking driver's So I'm, I've reversed in. She's gone in front, front ways. I. I hear a big thud, and she, she, she like, it's her, I, and my car shook. She clearly fucking hit my car with her door when she opened it. She, I looked back, she looked at me, had a surprised look on her face, and then fucking carried on as if nothing happened. Oh. Walks to the back of her car, starts taking a shower, I'm like, did this bitch just fucking, did she just, did she just fucking, uh, so I get out and I'm like, yo. What's going on, mate? You you hit my car, with, and then she she was denying the whole thing, flat out refusing. And I was like, "Well, can you open your driver's door so I can have a look?" And she, she refused. She stood in front of her door and refused. And then I was like, "Well, if you're going to refuse, I guess we're just going to stand here forever." <laughs> we stood there for probably an hour and a half. Oh my God! Someone came out and de-escalated the situation. She got in her car and started driving away. So I took a picture of her license plate and she was like, ah, are you allowed to do that? I'm like, dude, it's a fucking, it's a public space. So then she, she started take, starts taking pictures of me as well. Holy shit. Wow. And then she just pissed off. What is the fucking world coming to? Anyway, that was a long one. Sorry about that. No, that was good. Um, Soon. I love that when someone's done something wrong and like you're t- the guy's taking a photo of her that they're just like, well, I'll take photos as well. You're like, oh, you're sweet. Like, I don't give a fuck about you taking photos. The point of this is that I'm going to be alerting the authorities. An hour and a half's a long time. That is a long time to stay. He didn't. He didn't say whether there was any damage to his car though. I'd be interested to know that because if they just bump your car and there's no damage and you go, well, whatever. I feel like the way he described it that his car shook. Kind of implied. You would think there would have, have yeah. to be damage, but it's just more like... He left, he left that out, though. Because yeah. I'd be going to a... Dal, there's fucking a dent in our car where your door opens into. Like, you know, like... Uh, look, I'd be shocked, Tom, if he stood there for an hour and a half and there's no damage. Yeah. Because what is he Why getting out of Why would you... That? What's the point? What is he getting out of yeah. that? There must have been damage. There must have been there damage. There would have had to have been damage. Yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. What a piece of shit that woman is. She just wasn't interested in, you know. But like, you know, doing the decent thing. Oh, that's but the, but you know what? Actually, it's more than just being a piece of shit because like, piece of shit's also doing it and walking like not, like say say he wasn't there and she did it and she just fucked off. Like that's you know you're a piece of shit then as well. But like, the brazenness to literally do it while he's in the car and just go didn't do it. Like that's crazy sociopath shit. Didn't do it. Wasn't me. She obviously a proponent of um, to deny till you die. Yeah, the shaggy method. Just deny till you die. I caught you on camera. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> that's not me. That's, that's not my watch. No. That's not my wrist. No. <laughs> <laughs> on we go. On we go. On we go. Never been more sure 
then we're all going to die in October. Take your licks, boys. Oh, I don't think Bomb so. Bomb shelters soon. I don't think so. No, 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 no. You, I mean, you almost lost to Manly, so you won't be winning the comp. Basically, lost to Manly. Yeah. You shan't be winning the competition. Like, if you were to take it the last 25 minutes, you lost to Manly. <laughs> If you were to, if you were to, like, basically play up until like the thirty-fifth minute of the game, call it there, you lost to Manly. So, also, you lost to the Tigers. Yeah, and you lost to the Tigers and to the Dogs. Yep, and not you lost to Manly after you know thirty-five minutes. So, not winning the comp. You know, you know, you're not winning the comp. Even people who hate Manly can see you aren't going to win the comp. There'll be no bomb shelters, bro. Well, because that's the thing he doesn't realise. If the sun explodes, no bomb shelter is going to make a difference. No. No, it won't. That's a man who doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. No. If the sun explodes, the earth ceases to exist. Disintegrated. Yeah. So you can get, build that bomb shelter all you want, bro. But it's not sheltering you from shit. No. On we go. Hey boys, Rap and Roll Dribbler here. We are at Rap and Roll Bondi, post Manly loss. Take your licks, boys. Had a stubby cooler can of cola for first try. Now we are soaking our sorrows for a Rap and Roll combo, large chips, Pluma Road gravy, as Eddie would know. Word, word on the street. This is word on the street. We're just walking in Bondi right now. We're just walking the streets, boys. We're not making this up. Word on the street is you boys could not finish two rap and rolls. And that's not coming from me, mate. Don't shoot the messenger. This is coming from boys on the streets walking past us saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, you can't finish two rap and rolls. I mean... Joke's on you, bro. I've finished two rap and rolls like on fucking a hundred occasions when I used to live in Bellevue Hill and rap and roll delivered to my house before they stopped delivering to my house. Did they stop? So, you know, sometimes like they shit just starts falling out of your jurisdiction. I used to be able to get faux delivered from Ranwick in, uh, was it when we were in Bondi? I can't remember, but... That rap and roll was not far from your house. No, I know, I know. And then it was just like unavailable. Fucking annoying. Mm. The glory days are like well behind us. I remember shit used to be so far outside of my jurisdiction and I just like put the pin to the border and then when they got there, I'd call them and go, mate, it's just up the road. And by up the road, I mean like 5Ks up the road. <laughs> up a hill. And then I'd be like, I'll pay you cash when you get it. And they were always would, even at like four in the morning. Have you got cash on you all the time? Back then I did. Yeah. Cash comes in handy. I know. ATM machine wasn't working at the fucking server on the weekend. Cash then became king. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I like carrying some cash on me. Well, I, th I agree with you, just for those sort of emergencies. Mm. Uh, but yeah, bruh, fucking, that ain't a challenge. I don't understand what they were trying, what they were getting. At. They're trying to flex on us about rap and rolls. Like I, I basically put rap and roll on the map. No disrespect. I love rap and roll, and I would pound them into the earth. With reckless abandon. Someone that thinks you couldn't finish two hasn't spent any time with you. Well, I mean, I fucking did nineteen cheesies, so <laughs> come me with some real shit. That's a true story. Nineteen cheesies in f five hours. I can't remember the hours. I've kind of blocked it out, but it was I did yeah, whatever it was. Well, it would have had to have been five, wouldn't it? Did one of the just it was it was a rough yeah, few yeah, days yeah, after. That's okay. You don't need to get into it. Well, you're the one who keeps fucking. I just you know, I'm just. We're not, but it's not. We're talking about you eating. We're not talking about anything else. We just leave it there. Okay, I'll just park it there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Eddie. Uh, just ringing on behalf of all Manly and New South Wales fans. Now, look, off the top of my head, I can remember three times. You guys are probably going to live stream tonight. Manly play Eels, third state of origin, and last year's first round finals, Manly play Storm. Now, on behalf of a Manly fan and a New South Wales fan, this hasn't gone well, so I think you guys should give up the live stream. Honestly, if you care about Manly in the state of New South Wales, mm. please give it up. Thanks. He oh, so he's blaming the he's blaming that on us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we did one for Game Two of State of Origin. I think we won it, and we also did like plenty last year. We fucking humped him. I think we were top four. We did most of ours last year, and we won basically, basically all of them. 
yeah, we lost to the Storm, but that was just an anomaly. Well, you know what? You are going to have losses. And yeah, we lost to the Rabbitohs, but like, go back, check the tape. We were robbed by the refs. So, yeah. you know. Our record is actually very much in the positive. If you look at how many live streams we've done and our win loss record, it'll be positive for sure. Yep. It's probably like Bellamy numbers. Like I'd say so. 70% win rate, something like that. Yeah. Well, they're going to start probably calling Bellamy's numbers Hello Sport numbers based on our record. I think that's correct. So, no, we won't stop. No. In fact, we should probably do more. Yeah, well, I think we are actually doing another one on Friday. Are we doing one on Friday? Press the end. Rub it O's eels? Yep. So that'll be live on SEN and also on our YouTube. So we're doing more. So jokes on you. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you're not an Eels or a Rabbitohs fan. One of you's going to lose. Yeah. Uh, last one. This one's a double. A Dublay. Haven't a had Dublay. a Dublay for a minute. No, we haven't. Mm. Well, people know the rules now. Da Vinci Code Dribbler here, following on from my post on the P's and D's Facebook page that is kind of famous right now because I'm calling you out. I have revealed the Jamin Salmon, Ricky Stewart, NRL, underground religious war. I know that you know about it. And just for your information, I am sitting on my bathroom floor right now with a blue light going over the P's and D's, the last Ribble shirt. And I have found the truth. I know that it involves the disappearance of somebody recently from the network who has a last name, I'm not going to mention it, has a last name that is relevant to events over the last couple of weeks. And I remember you guys sticking up for Elon Musk to, to, to D or Dave. I know that he is a prisoner and I will rescue him. And we will probably kiss when I do that because I think that's just important right now. So... I've watched The Da Vinci Code five times this weekend. I think Tom Birmingham is kind of like Silas from that. I'm a little bit freaked out. Please don't track me down and find me. I'm just so scared right now. I see the sh I see Andrew Johns passing the ball. I can't quite make out where his eye contact is. I think that's the last clue that Peter Volandis is looking very ominous in the middle right there. We are all in deep trouble. I know you are involved. I know that Manly 13 plus has some sort of relevance. I just want you guys to know that I'm on to you. This dribbler going over the last dribble like it's the Da Vinci Code is <laughs> the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, yep, he's come back with a second, so okay, we'll good. see where he gets to. He's got, he has Hello, got anywhere my goes. name is the Da Vinci Code dribbler. You may know me from my fictional post on the P's and D's Facebook page in which I wasn't truthful. I want the punter and the dribbler to know that there is no underground religious war within the NRL. I want to make it clear that Tom and Eddie are not involved in any way with the conspiracy <laughs> leaked by Jamin Salmon and Ricky Stewart that doesn't exist. I also want to affirm that our Lord and Saviour Peter Volandis is not part of the global elite and that there are no clues on the last dribble t-shirt. To be clear, Dior Dave is not a prisoner. He did not get whipped when he was confronted, when he confronted our dear host on Elon Musk. I also want to be clear that nobody has gone missing. I would also like to say that Manly season is not dead. In fact, <laughs> they are in a slipstream and on track. I, uh, I can't say that bit. It's just too unbelievable. Uh, what, what do you think? No, 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 no. Why, 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 why? <laughs> <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude! That's oh a, god, that was creative. As that's fuck. a Hall of Fame dribble for me. I really enjoyed that. We haven't had a fucking a rip tear. It was bizarre in the extreme. In the extreme, we haven't had a dribble like that in a long time. No, I've been waiting. Da Vinci Code dribbler, fucking funny. That was bizarre. Hope you're Bizarre, right. dude. Hope you're all right. Bro. Yeah, I hope you're all right. I hope you weren't killed then, but I mean, it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like you could have been. Sounds like you were. It sounds like you weren't going to be able to listen to this, and maybe there is some sort of, you know, some uh, clandestine 
rugby league underground religion thing that's going on here and maybe that does have something to do with certain people going missing i can't confirm or deny that can't confirm or deny no can't no no won't fine that's us we'll leave it there Shout out to everyone, all the sponsors. Go listen to our interview with Gilly uh, on the YouTube or on the podcast if you haven't already. We uh, got another good one coming up this week. Um, I won't say who it is. We'll wait and see. Um, But you'll be able to hear all our interviews on SEN Wednesday, 8 p.m. That's either in SEN in Sydney or Queensland. Also on their apps, it's again on a Sunday, 12 p.m., then it comes out on the potty on a Sunday and on YouTube on Sunday. Uh, anything I'm forgetting here, Eddie? Do your jumpers on sale, houseport.shop. Yep. And the random stats guy joining about even. Boom. Bye-bye. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>